to like venture out into the unknown mm -hmm. on like an, a feeling or an inkling about somebody. And then I, I, I get pushback from people. And then later on, the direction I was guided, being guided was the correct one. But I really allowed a lot of self-doubt in there. Um, so That's spiritual warfare. Welcome to Royal Path. Um, uh, before we get started, I'm just going to say this real quick. Nobody needs to buy me a new microphone because last week I just plain out forgot to plug it in. So <laughs> when we were getting ready, I just forgot to plug it in and I was using my computer. Plug it in, plug it in. Yeah. So now every time I go plug it in, I'm going to think of Father singing that. And so it'll remind me every time to do it. That, if, that, if that doesn't make you, yeah. if that doesn't remind you, I don't know what will. I have a mic. It Andrew, works. Andrew, to be fair, I know that has happened to me I, at least one episode, if not two, that we've done. So don't feel bad. And, and I, the thing is, I had it sitting right in front of me, and yet I was talking through my uh, laptop up here. So, yeah. I mean, fine. that's exactly what I did. That's exact. And, yeah, exactly. And, Zipran, you're a kind man and a good brother. It's okay. I'm, I'm really at peace with it. As soon as, and actually, it might have been a good thing. Because there's some stuff in there I said later on that I wasn't 100% sure of when I went back and kind of oh, thought well, about what I said. The only thing I will say is that Melon is the word, is the <laughs> Elvish word for friend. It's not Melok, which honestly, I've actually had to correct a couple people about. But other than that, all right, um, Icebreaker, what did you get? And this is maybe this is maybe this is maybe nothing, but it's OK. <laughs> But what did you guys think of, did you guys get into, or what are your thoughts about the comic strip uh, Calvin and Hobbes? Oh, I yeah. Just, Interesting. Oh, yeah, I loved it as a kid. Yeah. I mean, I didn't understand a lot of it looking back on mm -hmm. it. Yeah. But at the kid, it was great. I think, actually, it was more fundamental in my understanding of life than I was willing to give it credit for until I was older on when I was reading it later on in life. There was a couple of things that have really stuck out to me about that comic um, that I don't know. There's some there's some themes throughout it, like the fact of like, I don't know, it's even just those wagon rides. You were in the toboggan and wagon mm -hmm. rides. But they would just like be talking the whole time. Down the hill, yeah. Yeah, down the hill. And uh, Calvin Hobbes is a big thing in my family. We read it, you know, a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And I remember like, I mean, yeah, there's some green messages in there, but also like there's this whole thing that happens and maybe I'm looking too much into it, but the author, the author, Bill Waterston, I think he makes a genuine argument for why Western religion is dead in the form like about Calvin's debate about Santa every year, because every year like Calvin has this whole like argument with Santa in his mind about like what is good. And like, and who mm. Santa to, de to decide like what is good and why are we not working with like a more objective truth? And meanwhile, Hobbes is like trying to challenge him on some of these points. And it's funny because Calvin always ends up like reverting back to his like childlike and immature nature. But like mm. in this way of like, well, how can I do this but not get consequences? Like, how can I do this in a way that doesn't like negatively impact me and it always always did but he was so blind to it i don't know if maybe i'm looking too much into it but i was just i've been looking back on some of their stuff recently bill watterson stuff and i'm like man this was shockingly good andrew it is interesting that you would bring up a kid's comic strip from that era era because for some reason after our last show and what we were talking about what came to my mind was the 
you guys, I'm sure you guys will remember this because everybody I think of, of, I don't, maybe not you, Andrew. It was maybe, I know Father Turbo, you'll know this. There used to be a magazine. It's actually still around. And after thinking about this, I actually ordered a subscription for my kids to see if what, it was really good or if it's gone complete. Thank you. <laughs> Why did you, how did you know? Yeah, and how did you know? I, I started because what came to my mind was, the the it always had a strip goofus and gallant uh-huh and gallant right yep yes yes goofus and gallant and how it was like goofus would do basically exactly what you said andrew mm-hmm. it was like it was meant to try to teach this idea of like self-serving mm-hmm. versus the wise and like gallant gallant was always ser- serving others mm-hmm. and goofus was always serving himself yeah. And it was very interesting to me that I was like, man, I thought about it and I was like, it was, and they were, it was, there was no like entertaining undercurrent or anything like that. It was like, Goofus goes outside and plays before doing his homework. Gallant does his homework and then he helps his mom with the dishes. It was like, just straight up, this yeah. is the good kid. This is the bad kid. <laughs> Don't be the bad kid. Be the good kid. Right. Yeah. And I was thinking and I was like, There's nothing like that in our culture now. And that was something that we took for granted. Like anytime you went to something where a place where kids would be having to sit for any period of time, a doctor's office, you know, whatever, there would be a highlights magazine. You would open it up and Goofus and Gallant would be there. So this must have been read by millions of children Mm -hmm. must have seen this. And Mm -hmm. to think that that didn't affect affect the culture and i'm like wow i got to thinking and i was like wow but there is something like that though what is it take your pick um blues clues dora all those things except what it's doing is the last few years it's been programming kids into liberalism wokeism exactly exactly so it it exists it's just been well the programming the programming evil. is still yeah. there, right? But yeah, it's, yeah. but that's and that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Was it? It's it, it's inverted. It's made it's inverted. evil good and good yeah. evil. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There is there we and and it just says if you wanted to know anything about the culture and where the culture has gone, mm-hmm. that to me, yeah. the the goofus and gallant. If you yeah. wanted to know what it what, what we had and what we lost, yeah, it seems so silly. Mm-hmm. But it's so visceral. Like, ah, yeah. I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't. I don't think it is. I don't think there's, it is silly. I think it's tragic. There's literally a comic in Calvin and Hobbes where they're in a field, and ha- and Calvin asks Hobbes, if "You could have anything in the world right now. What would it be?" And he's like, "Well, a good tuna mm-hmm. fish sandwich." And he's like, "Are you kidding? I'd ask for like my own island, millions of dollars. You know, a, a rocket powered supercar." And then in the end, it shows Hobbs eating a sandwich. He's like, "I got my wish." Like, I don't know what you're like, what you're doing, but like, I got my like that kind of like simplicity. That kind of like, no, it, you don't need to go for the top. You can just be like take joy in like simple things like that. Like, I don't see it in culture right now. And my wife and I are pretty vigilant about what kids watch, what our kids watch, and everything. And I don't see a lot of that anymore. Not preaching. Simple oh, it's the things. reverse. It's the reverse simplicity, but truth is always truth will always be simple. Like it's not that all simple things are true, but the truth will always be simple. It'll be hard. It'll be hard to take. It'll be a bitter pill to swallow, but it'll be a very, very simple. It won't be complex. There won't be all these moving pieces at all. (laughs) No, I mean, that's always, you can always tell when a demon is involved with trying to influence people and influence things. It's like complication, not nuance, right? But complication, um, complexity. Wa- it'll be a wall of text. Yeah. It'll be a wall of, a wall of text as opposed to one line. Yeah. You know <laughs> what, what police interrogators are told to look out for when someone's lying is how many what, who words. Who are? Wait, who? Please interrogators. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Look for how many words they use. And they show an example of a guy who was guilty. And they said, how do you know the victim? And he talked for the next 10 minutes. 
Like mm-hmm. just straight, just talking like these are the 10, like for the next 10 minutes, this is where, how we met. I went to college in this state, but she went to this and we talked about this and just kind of like guilt. The idea is to obfuscate. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. And he did it. He was the guy. I mean, as far as I know, he was the guy who did mm-hmm. it. So that being said, and I'm, I'm not going to talk a lot this episode, but I did from the moment last week's episode dropped. I don't know about how your guys' week has been, but mine's been a full of a lot of conversations with people. And hmm. there and it seems to have been centered around our statements about President Trump mm-hmm. and some of the larger narratives that are happening around him. And I won't go on and on about this, but I noticed a couple things. I will. <laughs> I think so, I think we I think that we will for the next year until the I the uh am not gonna the new president the new administration shuts us down. Because that's definitely not, gonna happen. Especially I'm not today. gonna go on and on. But what I will say is <laughs> one of the things that I noticed this time around, and thank God, is is that a lot of the things that were happening on the COVID side in twenty twenty, where if I took a stance, a lot of blanks were filled in about what I was being said. Do you guys follow what I'm saying? Like a lot of people would assume there are things that I believe that I do not because I'm quote unquote anti-Trump, right? So this continually kept happening to me over and over again that my people who would debate me, people who would talk to me, and some of those conversations were really fruitful. Some of them were actually like really, really good conversations. Some brothers from the church kind of challenged me on some stuff and that was good. But some of the, especially like the online discourse, there were a lot of words put in our mouths that just were not there. It just wait. There did, you, wasn't... did you say that these were people who watch or listen to this show? Mm-hmm. So yeah. these are people who listen to a show called The Royal Path that is about the concept of the royal path. Who, when you said, "I am against." the right or if you say something against the right say oh so you must be pro left and yet these are people who have listened to a hundred episodes for three years of a show called the royal path every single one of those people i see we don't even have to answer this because it's been answered for a hundred episodes every one of you go and watch the intro It means something. There's a right side and a left side, and they're both wrong. Go back and watch the Dune when the little demon is going from the right to the left and the right to the left and the right to the left. Okay? To be... The demons don't care which side you go. This is the thing. Go back in episode one. The title is, What is the Royal Path? And yet, after three years, a hundred episodes, that's my favorite show. It's my favorite show. It's the best podcast. And then the the entire concept, boom, go. Lost. <laughs> how? I'm like, how is this? How? How, long, how much longer must I? In, yeah. <laughs> must I say suffer you? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're. And that was just. And you I know, it's here. funny that that verse, Father, that verse has been all week, <laughs> all week. Yeah. That verse. Yeah. I can't tell you. There's been. I got it three. for the first time. I got it, Father. I got it. Right. I was like, oh, yeah, there's yeah. I like, just. Oh, I get. There's it. like two or three threads where I just had to be like, I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, I mean, I'm look, I, like, I just, I just, you know, it's all good, right? I'm all about public service announcement. You know, I'm going to do one each week, right? So, like, here's a, here's another one. So, you know, I had... Uh, I'll round it off. I've, I've had, like, five conversations and then, like, via email, a couple of things in the chat, whatever, and then, like, others where I just kind of, like, whatever, of, like... Hey, St. Paisio says. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, hold on, Father. Father, before we go further, look, we can can we read? Because the problem is, no one seems to have actually read. They're quoting this thing that they haven't read, and if they ha- if they have read it, 
They haven't read it twice, mm. which is probably something you could should do if you're dealing with the words of a holy person, mm -hmm. because you're not holy. Mm. I'm not holy. Mm. So if I'm reading St. Paisios, I'm reading it 20 times, mm. which I have on this. Mm -hmm. I, I've got it here. I'm oh, going to pull it up. Bring it up. I'm going to pull it up and we will read. And there's actually because they're quoting that. Mm -hmm. But there was there's also another very famous section where St. Paisios was talking about this exact same thing, specifically about the right and the left mm -hmm. and distinguishing between the right and the left. Mm -hmm. I, if you guys will indulge me, I'll read them both. Oh, oh please. Yes. Not, please. OK, please. OK. And I'll try to read them as dispassionately as I can, because I know that that's <laughs> the, the way in which they were said. OK, so let me. Uh, uh, some spices and some spice. Come on now. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes you hear him talk to his okay. nuns. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this is from uh, Elder Paisios of the Holy Mountain on page 123. When some people went to visit the elder just before an election, they asked who they should vote for. And he replied, vote for the one you believe it is best, the one who loves God and our country. This is where it seems people have stopped. That was my own piece there so this is i'll read the rest they always gave the same reply they are the same father then he added well look here all olive trees are the same all of them are affected by the same disease called dacos however some are affected 100 percent by it others 80 percent, and others 50 percent. since we are in need of olive trees we have to look for the ones that are affected the least when we go to vote, we should always bear in mind two things. A, how much the candidate loves God and is thus a conscious member of the church. And B, how much he loves his country and looks solely after its interests and not his own. If someone uses another criterion to vote, he is acting out of self-interest and is not behaving like a true Christian. Later on, Divine justice will allow him to pay for his mistake. So, so the thing here part. is, he that's the most important part is the yeah. last part. Yeah. Because he says, look, I'm going to give you two criterion to vote on. And if you vote on any other criterion. Now, notice he doesn't say anything about policy here. He says divine justice will make you pay for your mistake. What are the two criterion? A how much the candidate loves God and is thus the important part, a conscious member of the church capitalized, meaning orthodox, which is exactly something that was brought up in our conversation. So if somebody's voting for Trump and the A criterion, is he a, is he a member, a conscious member of the orthodox church? No, he is not. B, how much he loves his country and looks solely after its interest, the interest of the country and not his own. Of all the people on the planet who fail that criterion, in the history of American politics, perhaps no one has failed it more greatly than Donald Trump. So in this case, and he says if someone uses another criterion to vote, he's acting out of self-interest and is not behaving like a true Christian. So then if I say I can't vote for Donald Trump, and here's the thing, I hadn't, I, you know, I hadn't read this. I hadn't read this before this whole thing came up, but one thing that I knew, guys, when I read it or, or when it came up, I knew I was like, who, whoever is citing this and trying to justify that St. Paisios is the justification for them voting for Trump, there's no way. Yeah. There's no way. Yeah. So, okay, so let me read the other one because I think the other one is important to add to it. So this is from... Uh, Talks with Father Paisios. Oh, man, I don't have my glasses on. It's from 2000. Athanasios Bacavides. Okay. Uh, Thessaloniki, year 2000. 2000. One, okay, so here it is. One day, scandalized by a spiritual father who wanted to impose his political convictions on a spiritual child of his, I went to consult the elder concerning this. This is quotes. For me, a hand which doesn't do the cross, whether it's right or left, is the same, capitalized the same. And then the author put in brackets, i.e. atheistic politicians, either of the left or the right. They don't have a difference. Strive to learn who is honorable, righteous, and vote for them. Today we have need not of bright people, but of honorable people. Personally, if the communists weren't atheists, 
If they didn't hunt Christ, I would agree with them. It's good for the plots of land, the factories, to belong to everyone, not for one to be hungry while someone else is throwing away food. If material goods are not distributed with the gospel, in the end, they will be distributed with the knife. Mm. So wow. St. Paisios even said, I will agree with the communist policies. Mm -hmm. The problem I have with them is those policies aren't oriented toward Christ. Mm -hmm. And they aren't oriented toward Christ. Mm -hmm. See, and this is the thing. No one who used St. Paisios to justify their, their, and it's not the voting for Trump. It was not voting for Trump that we were talking about. It was fanboying Trump. That's right. And, and the whole, the That's whole, right. and making Trump a part of your identity. The whole episode was that even starting from the music conversation, people don't skip the intro. If don't I, skip the intro. If my whole stance is, is that this whole thing is a fraud in the first place. Why do Thank I you. care who you vote for? I That's don't right. care who you vote for. No. I never said, and this is one of the blanks that was filled in is people exactly. said that we were telling people not to vote for Trump. I no. never said that. I say it makes little difference who you vote. I mean, for. can I just interject something though? I just, I just want to sure. say like, it's one of those things for just saying something for the sake of for the sake of bearing witness, but I mean this this kind of proves the whole point about kind of like everything you know being said. Like, why care? Well, because of love of church and love of fellow and uh, love of brother, love of fellow man. That's that's why I say anything, right? I mean, the reality is is that the issue really becomes it's it's you know my John Paul, my God grant him paradise. You know, guilty conscience needs no reminding. It's mm. like it's like the people who just it's like it's 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 so funny. Um, people don't understand how uh, how how much like what you're saying. Don't skip the intro. These things. Yeah. That's the thing about the show. Like most people get this is like everything just kind of like refers to the other. And I mean, intentionally, it's just that's how God works it out, right? But this reality of just understanding the guilt and how that plays out and, and, you know, the kind of justifications and all the things it's like, this is what we're trying to put the finger on and people conflate because people conflate, you know, for instance, this whole thing about like um, just because your interests are lining up with the kind of policies and interests of Donald Trump, that doesn't mean it's right or good. And but are the church's interests lining up? It, That's the and, question. And, are well, Christ's interests lining well, up? Well, because here's the thing I was going to say, and thank you for saying that. But what I mean by that is okay. that doesn't mean the right and the good means that it is that lining up with Christ's interests. Like, yes. he, here's the thing. I'll just, throw, I'll just throw some things out with people. And it's just the fact that no one can, no one can understand this. It's, it's like the one – well, I shouldn't say no one. There's certain people – it's like, okay, Father, I'm going to go and, you know, go to the roughest neighborhood and just, you know, vote who's going to do the most abortions and da-da-da. And like, okay. You know, it's that type of like uh, hyperbolic, sarcastic, you know, like approach. That it just kind of shows me something because what we're trying to say is like, for instance, what are the principles by which Christ calls us to live? You know, like one of the things I had said to people is like, you know, okay, yeah, you want to throw St. Paisios, whatever. It's like, Look, uh, are you living in the year? <laughs> like, whenever that was written, like, what year was that written? Like, 78 or whatever in Greece? Yeah, for real. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, but there's a real And that's the thing that he says, in... our country. Yeah. He loves our country. Yeah, yeah. Because... Which means he's specifically talking to Greeks about Greece. And, and here's the thing. People don't, people don't want to hear that. But I'm like, hold on. If you don't want to hear that, let's just be clear. Let's not start reading the, the fathers and the elders like you used to read the Bible as a Protestant. Right. And just want and just the wanted context. to get rid of just want to get rid of all the context as it as it as it applies or doesn't apply to you. Because here's the thing, this is my big point to a couple of people I talked about with. Uh 2020 was a game changer. And here's the thing. This is why I want to shut people down on this, you know? If 2020 wasn't a game changer for you, then what are you doing here? Because you're probably new in the church. You probably came to the church because of 2020 and all the evil and all the stuff that you saw. You're, you know, in the naming wolf camp, you know, all that stuff, whatever. That's great. Mm -hmm. But it's like if 2020 was a game changer, which we're all on board with, 
when did 20, when did that all just go away? When, like, th- see, this is just the repeating of the same thing. At what Ephesians point? Ephesians 612. Ephesians 612. Ephesians 12, you know what I'm saying? So I think, I think this is the thing I want to get on. It's like, okay. Uh, if it makes it easier for people, cause this is the, like you said, it's the fanboy problem. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's the fanboy problem, but it's also, it's the same thing. You remember we, uh, I was talking about that problem where, you know, I have one particular brother who, you know, we're not associated anymore. And a big part of it was just because, you know, anything that questioned the basic, you know, kind of like narrative of reality as it's been given as an American, socially speaking, he couldn't accept that. Anything that questioned it, you're a conspiracy theorist. And I was like, yeah, all of that is just because, you know, you're you're working to have, and this is the thing I'm trying to say to these people, you're working to have the the nice car, the picket fence and all those things. And, I, and I'm not begrudging you for it. Just like Cyprian said a couple episodes ago, like I'm not, begr- I'm not begrudging the bro stumbling home late at night. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, Hey, I'm not hanging out with them though. I'm not hanging out with them. I'm not hanging out yeah. with them. But it's like, Hey, okay. You know, it's like, look how, okay. Here's the thing. There was this uh, essay that was just, I just saw it today by Paul Kings North. Right. Oh yeah. And, um, it was kind of like, I can't remember what it was, but he's basically talking about like the way of St. Moses, whatever. It's a pretty good, you know, but it's like, I'm just going one step further, right? And the reality is, is that I, I think as Christians, you have to start looking at things. This is what we're trying to say, categorically different and in a categorically different like lens, you know, it's or father, for, father, forgive me. How about you just start looking at things? Like, how about you just start looking at the things instead of just taking what you're told about the things? How about you actually look at the things? But see, the thing is, is people don't think that they're being told the things because a lot of people now, they have just, they, they, they don't realize that like, okay, the old megalith media giants are like, quote unquote, dying, but it's just switched. It's kind of like, look. How many people think Daily Wire is like a valid, like, like objective, like conservative Dude. source? You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's, 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 it's literally just switching masks. You know what I'm saying? It's father, father. I don't want to interrupt you if you have more, but I think well, I have a little something. I think well, I have a little something right here whenever you're ready. I, I just, I just want to say, you know, Saul's armor doesn't fit. Mm-hmm. When King David was brought, you know, to the camp, and, you know, the, the Israelites are cowering and, you know, oh, what are we going to do? You know, and Goliath is just blaspheming and cursing God. He's like, are we going to sit here and let this Philistine dog curse the, <laughs> the name of the living God? No. And then he's like, I'm going to do this like you're crazy. And then his uh, Saul's armor was brought to him and Saul's armor did not fit. So David's like, nope, forget it. Right. He took five stones, right. The five words of the Jesus prayer. And then he went out and slew goliath now this is what happens when christians want to put on like the the poli sci thing like you cannot go into the battle right it's ephesians 6 12 this is another way of understanding it saul's armor doesn't fit like man a lot of these cats you are just nursing on the teat of 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 a different model like megalith out a uh, new source, but it's just, they're like, Hey, I'm the edgy guy. I I'm yeah. <laughs> That's you know like, I mean? they're like, it's like when the punk rock band sells out and they're still like trying to advertise themselves as we are still punk rock. It's like, no yeah. man, you've been signed to capital for like 10 years. Yeah. I don't yeah. know what to tell you. Like you're yeah. getting, like you're selling out arenas. You're yeah. Like I was having a good anymore. conversation. Don't lose your points. If I know it's good. Like, no, no, no. I, I, I can't lose it. I was having a, <laughs> I was having a good conversation with my brother today. It was talking about like, you know, like there's this whole thing with like Ron Paul, like Dr. Ron Paul, yeah. they're trying to swoop him in and stuff like that. And it's just kind of like, it's, I'm just kind of flabbergasted, right? Because it's kind of like, oh, well, never mind. <laughs> Thank God, you know, like <laughs> good times have come, you know? It's like, no, no, there's no way that they're just casting a wider net and trying to use the the decades long integrity of Doctor you know Ron Paul for like their advantage that would never happen like 
are oh. who we, like like no we're here for like we're the freedom fighters you know what i mean like vivek and and uh well well hold on father let's since you since you brought up so I've I've got a, I've got a couple of things, but this is a good yeah. time for it since you yeah. brought up Vivek, right? Yeah. And about one of the things that was the last show is that you know people either they didn't understand or we have little AI demons already running around in our comments and purposely mischaracterizing, which by the way we know is happening, like it's happened on that people go watch Destiny schizo arc that Asmund Gold did, and you will see. Destiny, that YouTuber, was actually, he had in his comments, there were actually, he figured out, oh, these are, a what, they have AI running around YouTube comments now, like mischaracterizing things that are being said, like on purpose. So so people were saying that we were, that that the they were saying that, or mischaracterizing, again, this us saying that there's a false dichotomy, mm -hmm. that there actually isn't as much of a difference between these two as you are saying there is, right? And I'm, I just want to give, if you guys will indulge me, it will be worth it. Indulge me for about three minutes, okay? I want to give two examples, okay? One thing, because one of the things that came up was people were like, and you said it yourself, Father, about the abortions, right? Mm -hmm. They were like, well, so the first thing is, Trump won some states where a constitutional right to abortion also won. That's what okay. I have been saying. Hold, hold on. All right. Hold All right. on. But I, let me let me read something. OK, let me read something. And and. This is a this is uh, someone speaking. Right. They're writing this. And it says it is imperative to guarantee that women have autonomy in deciding their preference of having children based on their own convictions, free from any intervention or pressure from the government. Why should anyone other than the woman herself have the power to determine what she does with her own body? A woman's fundamental right of individual liberty to her own life grants her the authority to terminate her pregnancy if she wishes. Restricting a woman's right to choose whether to terminate an unwanted pregnancy is the same as denying her control over her own body. I have carried this belief with me throughout my entire adult life. Who wrote that? Oh, that's Melania Trump in her new best-selling book that Donald Trump has been advocating and and uh, and pushing <laughs> and talking about his best-selling author wife. But that's what Donald that Trump took. Donald Trump took a nationwide abortion ban out of the platform of the Republican Party. It had been there my entire life. Every time he has been asked about it, Donald Trump has said. Well, we move it to the states. Well, what did moving it to the states do? It guaranteed that it would exist in many, many states in the United States. So everybody who says that they, that they voted for Trump because of the abortion issue, bull. It's, it's a non-issue. It's a non-issue. It, it does not matter what the president. No, Andrew, abortion Andrew, 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 Donald Trump is pro-abortion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but even Don then. Andrew Donald Trump. Let's. I. We cannot. We have to bear witness on this. Mm -hmm. We cannot prevaricate. We cannot justify. We cannot rationalize. I know. I mean, Donald saying... Trump. Donald Trump is pro-abortion. I'm not going to say it any other way, Andrew. And we shouldn't say it any other mm -hmm. way because the proof is right here. Mm -hmm. No. So I'm... a vote for Donald Trump is a pro-abortion vote. It is no, not a pro-life vote. It's not. It's not a pro-abortion -abor vote. This is the magic. It is a pro-abortion vote. No, it's not because it's no longer a presidential issue. He See, can't but no, 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 no. But no, no, no. But we're, that's talking about it but, from a worldly policy sense. No, I'm talking about it from a spiritual sense of who your I, leader is and what your leader stands for. I just got to be able to finish to say this. One second. Okay. This is... This is the issue that's driving me insane. This is where I talked with more people about this. And it's like, it does not matter why, or it does not matter if he's pro-abortion or not. But it does, absolutely, and I can quote that because I just read a letter from St. Nikolai to one of his spiritual children. And when the Saint, the Saint, they asked St. Nikolai, is it okay to have two different sets of morality for politics and for everyday life? And St. Nikolai said, absolutely not. 
It is not okay to do okay. that. You cannot hold yourself to a different standard as a politician as you can as a normal person. So yes, it 100% matters from a spiritual sense that Donald Trump is pro-choice. Let me make that clear. Whoever does the YouTube shorts, you can cut it out right here and say, Andrew Funk is saying Donald Trump is pro-abortion. But this is the maddening thing is the people who approached me and whether on the internet or in real life and said, but he is he's fighting against abortion. It's a mute issue. He has no power over abortion. He surrendered it to states' rights. It's no longer a presidential vote. It does not matter what stance. But, but he's what, so what they said to you, Andrew, but the thing is, it's not about Donald Trump and it's not about policy, right? It's about their perception. And then you have to and you have to say this, because the real issue is this. If your perception is that Donald Trump is pro-life against all evidence that is actually there, it's a spell. what we're saying here is it's a spell. That's the spell. It's, that's what I'm because saying. Because how else, how else do you hold a view He's that is magician. clearly false? <laughs> FDR, FDR. Are we back at 2020? Me. Are we back at 2020 again? We are. FDR are. convinced people he <laughs> could are. still walk. Yeah. FDR right. convinced people he could still yeah. walk. That's yeah. what I'm saying. This is not outside the realm of possibility. You can prove with video evidence that FDR can walk, but he could not. This is what I'm saying. Is it's like so much of this power is is de facto power. He doesn't have as much power as people think he is, and not only that, he has never taken stances. Well, okay, but like, well, well, hold, hold on, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Ephesians six twelve, man. I just, I just, I want to, I just want to lift it up a little bit, right? Because this is a good example yes. of what happens when we, we're, when we are existing in the realm of the psychological and the worldly. It's just like, but if we just lift it up a little bit and get some clarity, meaning get Christ, it's like this. All these things become, and that, and that's the, that's what we're saying is. If you are still in this realm of like this and that, like I'm going to say something bold. You just don't have Christ in the capacity that you think you do. Mm -hmm. Because what you're arguing for is something that is based fundamentally on temporal comfortability. I'm sorry. People don't want to hear that, but it's like, this is, this is just the reality that this is what everything is based upon. Because look, the, some of the, rationalizations about like no you know it's like you got to take a stand you got to vote for the right thing and this and this and that and it's like yeah but how do you apply that same type of morale that same type of like moral uh moralistic justification for yourself and like why you're voting but like here you are this is what i'm trying to get at this idea of abdicating i mean at the very best right not saying this is the case but at the very best he abdicated his power to do the right thing to the states yeah, at the best. At the best. The at best you can say. At the best. Just, I want everyone to be really clear on this, right? At the best, he abdicated. Sin of Adam is abdication, right? He abdicated mm -hmm. presidential power to actually do something about it. At best. He is neither hot nor cold. He's yeah. neither hot nor cold. Yeah. And because he is lukewarm. Yep. Yeah, at best. At best. And so and so these are the things where it's like, that's OK, man. Look, it's not a big deal, but just own it. Just just own it and be like, yeah, yeah like, OK, it. I'm starting to see things because yeah, like, you're under a spell because you because you think that. And again, it's everything they've been saying your hatred of the wokes and all the stuff. It's like, look, I got, you know, Lord, do I got a show for you. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> we can we can talk about all kinds of stuff. We can pull out the Kamala. We can talk about Joe Biden and and all that stuff. But it's like. For instance, like Cyprian's statement about self-interest, like most people heard that and then they were just like, no, Joe Biden's the worst. And it's like, oh, my gosh, like <laughs> what we're looking at. OK, let me just like, walk. It back. Let, let me just let me just walk it back a little bit. Let me get Does anybody really believe that Donald Trump ran for president. To, because of just, his love for the United States of America. Come, yeah. yeah come on. Like, I just, I just want to lift it up a little. I just want to lift it up. It's like, you know, why is, um, like, it's a terrible thing, right? But the abuse of children, the sexual abuse of children, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a terrible thing, right? I just want everyone to follow me. It's a terrible thing. But why is it 
that when it's done by um, a, like a parent to a child, uh, a teacher to a child, and you know ultimately the worst, a clergyman to a child, why is that so much more grievous? Because it is. I'll tell you, I mean, look, if you compare rando, whatever, yeah, terrible, yeah, 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 right? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like what we're really like scandalizes and gets the ire up is like when someone's that when the child's own parent, the teacher or the clergyman does it because they're the they're the ones who are supposed to be guarding and protecting. Right. So it's truly evil. It's That's truly, truly evil. evil. It's truly yeah. evil. See, if if those of you with ears to hear hear what I'm saying, it's like <clears throat> this is why it's like um, you know, again, I, I was I was talking to brother today. It's it's kind of like um, the new thing that we have to start really thinking about as Christians is like that. That's too good to be true. Like no one thinks yeah. that way. Yeah, yeah. Like no one, no one is looking at like you know us. Oh, that's, that's too good to be true. No one. And I'm, and I'm not talking about skepticism. I'm talking about discernment. And if anything, I'm talking about just being, um, you know, kind of like a realist about like, yeah, what do you expect? What do you, what do you, what do you really, what do you really expect? And what's happening is people obviously are expecting a lot. And, and this is why getting into it, because I want to try to kind of move it up a little bit to help people kind of move past these things is like, you are wanting you don't realize it right and i and i think maybe because some of it feels abstract to people the way that we talk about these things um and maybe that's why we should maybe talk about how are we supposed to live then but you know you don't realize the bigger picture it's like okay well what can we do what are we supposed to do well in order for you to do the thing that you're supposed to do you have to raise your understanding because if you think that you mm-hmm. <laughs> trying to sew up a little bit of here and there, a little bit of, you know, kind of the pinch of incense, you know, just to kind of get uh, to get by and to get your own, get your own goods. That's not, that's not going to cut it. You need to have a bigger perspective. Yes. Father, and that's for your children to have a, a future and all that stuff. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, what's just first time viewers, just in case, what yeah. pinch of, what's the pinch of incense? What are you talking about there? So the pinch of incense is, you know, in, in the ancient times, our, our forefathers as Christians, you know, they would be brought forward and said, look, you can have your Jesus. You can have all those things. That's no problem. Just give a little bit of incense because incense was just a pinch of incense offered to Jupiter, to whatever the God is, right? The acquiescing, the bending of the knee. You can have Jesus. That's great. But just give this little pinch of incense. Give this offering, right, to the God the state god the god the the demon right and you can you can go your merry way this is the unions this is the byzantine catholics you know what i mean this is this sure. is this is like well father just- father can i can i can i i think that this 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 is something that i wanted to point out that no one has pointed out and because you brought up jupiter i think that this is the right point mm. so forgive me right please so okay so jupiter the name jupiter is juice juice pitar Right. And it's a it's a basically like Aryan word. Deus Pitar, God, the father, the father, God. Right. And Deus is the name of the Hindu God of the sky. So let's do this. OK, <laughs> Deus is the name of the Hindu God of the sky. Yeah. And it's where we get Zeus and it's yeah. where we get Deus. And it, yeah. it be, just became God. OK, another name, the other name for the God of the sky, Deus, it, the, the Hindu God mm-hmm. is Akash. Mm-hmm. And the short of that is Kosh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Who was just named FBI director today? Come on. Kosh Patel. Come on. Okay. Now, uh, what's interesting. So we have, because I just want to say, is nobody going to point out the fact as Orthodox people, is nobody going to point out the fact how many people in this whole thing are named after Hindu gods? Come on. So, so JD Vance's wife, JD Bring Vance's it up. wife is, Pull, is Usha. Let's, let's show him some evidence. Hold on. This, hold this on. I will. Show. People could just go. This yeah. is on Wikipedia. This is nothing. JD Vance's wife is Usha. That's the Hindu god of the dawn. Okay? Uh, then we have Vivek Ramaswamy. Okay. Ramaswamy means Lord Rama. Vivek means wise. Vivek Ramaswamy's name literally means wise Lord Rama. 
And, now, then you have. Hold and on. not only that, but he re- recycled a speech from Obama. I'm just saying, if you think that not, you're using the same. The, people. No, we've we're raising this, Andrew. We're raising this. Well, I know, we're, but it goes we're, back to we're, we're we're at Ephesians. We're at Ephesians six twelve. We're not at Obama. I'm. This is raised. Okay, we've got this is. So then we have. Now there are two women who were in this whole story, who have been direct antagonists of each other. Right, direct antagonists. And one wants her to, sp- to say our name in a very specific way, Kamala, mm-hmm. okay? And the other one, it's Tulsi. Mm-hmm. Now, here's what's interesting about these two. So Tulsi was a Democrat. Then she switched over. She's now the director of national intelligence, okay? So we have the FBI director is Akash, right? The god, the deuce. We have Tulsi, who is that director of national intelligence. She runs all the three letter agencies in the Trump administration. And she was supposedly in the story, the direct uh, antagonist from even back in the democratic debates, right? She, her big claim to fame was that she went off on Kamala, right? About locking up the, all the black guys when she was in, that was her whole claim to fame, right? Now, Kamala and Tulsi are both in the Hindu tradition avatars of the god Lakshmi. So both of those names refer to the same goddess who is the consort mm, That's right. who is the consort of Vishnu, the main god. So it's basically their version of the Theotokos mm-hmm. is Lakshmi. Both Tulsi and Kamala are the same. Now, here's what here's another thing. Tulsi Gabbard is a Hare Krishna. She was raised Hare Krishna and she went to boarding school at a special Hare Krishna school in the Philippines. And now people may say, "Oh, well that's what she did in the past. That's what she did in the past." Well, have what about her uh, you know, what's what's her famous thing? You know, what's her famous trademark? Right? The hair. Mhm. You're like, why does she have Rogue that streak. gray sh- that gray streak in her hair? What is that for? Well, if we just go and we just look up Tulsi, Tulsi in Hinduism, right on Wikipedia, and we look at this statue right here, a Murti, right, a statue, and we see that it's this statue, even the one here is at ISKO, what is this? ISKO on, mm-hmm. right? Which is, ISKO on is the worldwide Hare Krishna. And then if we go and we look at the hair, she puts that gray in her hair because it is she's it's a devotional to Tulsi. That's why she has that gray in her hair. That's why she puts it into her hair. Because the Hare Krishnas depict Tulsi, the god Tulsi, with a gray streak in her hair. Hmm. <sighs> That's too much. Now, the fathers tell us to not even do yoga. Yeah. To not even do yoga. Yeah. Mind you, Indian Americans are 1.35% of the U.S. population. But yet, there's one named after a god who's the FBI director. There's one named after a god who is the director of national intelligence. There's one named after a god who uh, displaced the Democratic guy so that she could use and there, lose. And there's one named after a god who is the wife of the vice president and who is really the real thing. She she worked at Charlie Munger's law firm. She clerked for Kavanaugh and she clerked for Chief Justice Roberts. J.D. Vance is a, J.D. Vance is a loser. She carried him through and the two of them the two of them were friends with Vivek Ramaswamy when they were all at law school together at Yale. And then, she, and and then he went to work for... And, so Vivek this and is Kamala's like, family come from the same... They're from the same... Well, they're all Brahmins. Yeah, they're all, all Brahmins. Those are, all those they're are all Brahmins. Brahmins. They're That's all from the, the Brahmin Brahmins. class. They're all Brahmins. Every single one of them. And so this is the thing. This is why I said maybe people just start looking. Just mm-hmm. look. Mm-hmm. Just look at what you brought in at Ephesians 6.12, because somebody who's operating from Ephesians 6.12 mm. is like, wait a minute, why do we have all these Hindu gods all of a sudden in control of the most sensitive? <laughs> the FBI, the CIA, the NSA, they're all under the control of somebody with, and somebody who's working with the world's richest man, 
to tear down the U.S. government. Yep. And everybody's like, yay! Yep. Orthodox people like, yay! Yep, yep. Yep. Speaking of Orthodox people, I just sent it in there. I don't know if you want to pull it up, but okay. the, I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher the names on it. But the um, Oskardham uh, Swamin Ryan Swamin Temple, yes. the one, that huge yes. city in New Jersey. Oh, in New Jersey, yes. yeah. Right. So, so speaking of Orthodox, this is where that I'll pull this in. Unfortunate Orthodox bishop out of the Greek Archdiocese gave this terrible. Uh, he apologized for it, quote unquote, later, but this terrible, uh, you know, like this is a wonderful spiritual thing. This huge, like city of a temple, huge city of a temple in, in New Jersey. And so, you know, this thing of, New Jersey. Yeah. I mean, it yeah. is. Have you seen I'm this before? Pull it up right here. No. Have you seen it before? It's the size of a city. It's the size of a city. Oh, of course. It's the size of a city. Of course. Um, and so I, and so again, you know, there we go. Trying to lift the thing a little bit higher for people to understand. Um, that's just like one aspect of it. I mean, there's other photos and stuff. It's just like it's like a city, right? Um how many how many people are doing, you know yoga think about how many people have this new age influence i mean where did they get that money i mean where's the money to build this temple coming from i mean like dude that's it's india, india is the most populous country on earth yeah but i mean again you just said that 1.35 percent of america is indian who's this temple yeah but they're for? they're the most they're the well they're one of the mm -hmm. wealthiest ethnicities because mm -hmm. all of them all of them are all brahmins mm-hmm the difference between India and every other immigrant is the Indian immigrants are the wealthiest elites that come and move here. You've never seen someone from the Kshatriya class or the Vaishya yeah. class or the Shudra class. You've never that that caste mm -hmm. is like the bottom 90 percent of India. You've never seen one of them. They don't leave India. Mm -mm. You've only ever seen a Brahmin. The top of the top. The top of the top. And the Patel, top. by the way, is the top of the Brahmin. Patel can uh, Patel yeah. can sit at the top. And what's the most common uh, last name in London, Metropolitan London? Patel. Patel. It's not Smith. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's not and Brown. The, and the the movement of sync of the, the synchronicity that we're all swimming in, where does that come from? Mm -hmm. What what allows this? What what allows the this? Excuse me, not the synchronicity. There, there's that, but this the syncretic syncretism. The yeah. syncretism. Thank you. The syncretism. Where does that come from? Thank where does the perennialism know. come from? It it oh, comes it's Hindu. It's all Hindu. It's, it's all, all Hindu. Hindu. Hinduism. The the demons of Hinduism are the ones that have moved the needle so much mm -hmm. that even quote unquote Orthodox Christians don't even know what they're. You know what I mean. They don't, they don't they don't even they can't even tell what a pure cut of of religion in Christ is because it's so infused with all these other things. And because those demons are shapeshifters. Mm -hmm. Like they can they can embody, they're happy to embody an old version of them, a new version yep. of them. They'll they'll embody any of them. Listen, one of the big things people don't understand is, you know, there's a reason why Christianity can't penetrate certain places. There's a misnomer mm -hmm. that, oh, there's been no missionaries or people. No, it's not true. That's wrong. It's, it's that there's certain principles. Thomas was there. I'm sorry, forgive me, Father. Thomas, Thomas went was to there. India. Yeah, there's Thomas St. Thomas Christians yeah, are there. That's right. But there's certain principalities that are just, they're so strong, but not so strong as in like Dolph Lundgren. I mean, strong in like what we're talking about because this, that syncretic tendency, that's what's powerful because this, it's the same reason why. One of the worst spirits you deal with, right, in regards of like, let's just say, like just exorcisms, whatever, is like when you start dealing with um, Santeria spirits and certain Yorba spirits. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they can shift. Jesus. Because because their power is found in their ability to basically enmesh themselves to such a degree. Mm -hmm. You can't you you can't isolate them enough to pull them out. Mm -hmm. Right. What do you do when you have cancer? Right. You have to isolate the cancer. Isolate it. Yeah. 
But if you can't isolate the cancer, you're done. That's and right. this this is this is the nature of of Hinduism, right? Yeah. I mean, look at Kali. <laughs> you know what I mean? The mini arms. What do you think that's all about, right? So that's it. And and I, and I think the thing is, is like, and and there's going to be people like, oh, okay, whatever. But it's like, if you don't think this is the case, we can just keep moving on. It's like. There's this whole place. Father, if they don't think it's the case, forgive me. If they don't think it's the case, they need to go read St. Seraphim Rose. I, I was, they need to go read the religion of the future, the future because I mean, he was har- he was harping on Hinduism. He said, this is the religion of the future. Yep. It's coming from Hinduism. Yep. He speaking said it. Of, yep. Speaking yep. of St. Paisios, he was on a plane above India and shuddered and crossed himself and said, like, it's not good down there. It's it's like, then that was just him on a plane. Yep. So, I mean, let's talk about St. Paisios. Yep. And I mean, that was the, the religion of the future. I mean, to this day, because of that book, even before I really knew what was what, there's a whole wing of a mu- art museum here that's all Hindu deities. Oh, man. And even being there, it's just like being yeah. on when we have to walk through it, because I go there sometimes with my kids, not that part, but we always like stick to the other side of the hallway and cross yourself because it's pretty intense in there. I can just feel it just by walking by. Yeah. Yeah. And it's. Well, uh- well, the the interest. So here's here's another little tidbit for people, right? Where is Kamala Harris from? San Francisco, mm-hmm. right? And we're all like, yeah, San Francisco is bad. Wait, but where are all of those people that I just named off from? Mm-hmm. They're all from San Francisco. Mm-hmm. They're all from San Francisco. The J.D. Vance and his wife. After Yale, they went straight to San Francisco. He worked for Teal's law, uh, Teal's venture capital firm, and she worked for Munger and Toller in San Francisco. And what place has the most yoga studios? What place do people do yoga more than anywhere else in the United States? What place has a yoga studio in the airport? A yoga room in the airport, a public yoga room. They don't have a public chapel. See, here's can they I have a can public I just, yoga room. Can I just throw something yeah. out? And, and and here's the thing, like, I hope someone's day is ruined. <laughs> you know what I mean? I because if your day is ruined from this, good, mission accomplished. Because this is what needed to happen. Because you're like, okay, great, whatever. Years of peace, that's fine, but let's just have to look at these things, right? Because no, as a Christian, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, no, not so much. Not as you thought. Mm-hmm. And Okay, we already we already covered the you know the, the idea of Zog thing last week, last week, right? Mm-hmm. So now we're we're trying to raise the we're trying to raise it up for people. We're trying to raise it up for people, okay? Let's just go a little bit further, right? So what you don't realize, our dear brothers and sisters who are struggling with this, is that you've bought, just to be very frank, a lie that Republicanism equals conservatism equals Christianity. That's just flat out not true. We've already given you some. We've already given you some stats on the st- the status of abortion and what that means, and like the whole thing of abdicating. And you can't apply. You can't get mad at people like say like us. Like, oh, you're not going to vote. Well, not voting is allowing a the evil to win. It's like, well, he abdicated the right. So I'm just going to keep going. But here's the thing about this, right? Shout out, right? Because you know, a good brother from the church brought this up. I didn't even know this. Grinder all but shut down. I saw that. Do you want me to pull the article? Pull it up. <laughs> you know okay, what I mean? Talking. Grinder all but shut down at the RNC. Now, here's what's interesting to me. I think I'd said it before. I'm just gonna say it again. Like we had this conversation. I don't know if it was in the chat or, or on air or whatever, but like when Amber Rose got up there and was just like <sighs> Bro. I just, you know what I'm saying? When she gets up there, now she's the face of quote unquote conservatism, which is you know going to equate Christianity. It's like Christians like wake up. <laughs> like, oh, what did he say too? Christians, you'll never have to vote again. I think yeah. he had said yeah. that also. Yeah. It's like yep. you got that right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> he told you exactly. He exactly. told you exactly. He told you exactly when someone tells you who they are, believe them, you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Grinder, gay dating app saw influx of users during the Republican Na- National Convention. Okay, whatever. So someone can be like, okay, well, salon and da da da. It's like, well, I mean, but all of these, all of his picks, JD Vance, again, let me say it again. JD Vance is backed by Peter Thiel. Yeah. Right after 
he they got out of Yale. He went and he worked for Mithril Capital in San Francisco, which is run by Peter Thiel, which, by the way, Eric Weinstein is also a Thiel uh, capital uh, fund manager. Right. Who, by the way, whose wife is also Indian. Hmm. Hmm. And and who worked in the Obama State Department. Has hmm. he ever mentioned that? No, she was sir. a deputy assistant. She was the deputy assistant secretary of state, Eric Weinstein's wife, Indian wife. Hmm. Right. Peter Thiel is an unrepentant homosexual, mm -hmm. period, mm -hmm. period. He was on Trump's first transition team. You notice he has not he has not been out in front. Of course not. He has led all he but he is running. He Peter Thiel, Peter Thiel just invested in Vivek Ramaswamy's um, crypto hedge fund. I mean, he's the and one who made Vivek. He made Vivek. He made the deck. Someone, someone, and whoever you were, forgive me. I want to give you a shout out and a salute you. Someone in the comments last week was like, hey, you know, there's a couple people here and there. Like, they just mentioned how, like, if you, it's real basic how Teal is the kind of, like, bankroller and the funder of all this stuff on both sides. All of it. On all both sides. It. And, like, this is the thing. It's it's a lot of the people. In fact, I, I feel very comfortable saying the probably vast majority of people who are like, you know, well, hey, I just... And I, God bless you for trying to be civil. And, you know, it's all good. You know, it's, we're just having a conversation. But I highly doubt half of what we're talking about, they know. That's why last time I was like, um, you know, you've all Harari. And I was like, I'm not trying to be like yeah. that. I'm dropping a random name that you don't know to yep. be like that guy. I'm saying yep. that to say Saul's armor doesn't fit. Don't like Christians, Orthodox Christians. If you don't even know half of what we're talking about in this sense, don't don't try to play the game. Don't try to wear Saul's armor because you don't understand what you're playing into. And that's why Christ calls you to be sheep and just be like, hey, you know, <laughs> just like deal with your own bag of sand. Deal with your own and, and do not look mm. at that with disdain. Right. Do not look at that with, with disdain, because here's the thing. The enemy is. Are are not only surrounding, but they're they're in they're they're getting into the walls now, right? The barbarians, oh, they're, deep, they're deep. The barbarians deep are in the deep walls. in the game. I mean, <laughs> how much deeper do you get than in charge of the FBI, CIA, NSA, and DIA? Say, how much deeper running, do you get? Yeah, they're running yeah. the place. Like yeah. they've been running yeah. the place. For yeah. a no, 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 no. I'm trying to I'm trying to keep it up here. Uh, forget the country. I'm talking. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm culture. talking about. Those who would, you know, be under the banner of Christ as King and all that stuff. Oh, now that's this is what I'm talking about. Listen, well, sheep and goat, sheep and goats, father, sheep and goats. Well, and the, uh, the 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 sacking is done from someone lock unlocking the gate from the inside. Yeah, exactly. You see what I'm saying? And so, going getting back to twenty, it's like everyone's like, oh yeah, they're all an uproar. Excuse me about bishops and this and that, but it's like. When did that change? It, it, it moved from one thing, which you didn't like because of certain personal prejudices. And now those prejudices are removed and, and given with a, a preference, right? You, <laughs> your disdain for your prejudices set you up to take the worm of your preferences. Yes. You see? Their, de so, their degeneracy is your trap. And so the people are hooked on the worm and it's like, look, um, well, you... Like, you think that there's some frontal assault of, like, the gays and this and that. You don't need it because everyone's willing to, like, compromise. Like, how are we going to actually run this thing? You know, well, we got to we got to make compromise. We got to do this and that. And we got to get the pinch of incense, you know. That's and the reality is, is <clears throat> like I was telling, I had a great conversation with David Gronoski uh, mm -hmm. this weekend, you know, and I was just trying to tell him, it's like, look, man, either way, you got to kiss the ring. Right. Mm -hmm. You're you're kissing a ring. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is the problem is that people think that like, hey, great, we're not kissing no rings. And what, and what I'm talking about, I'm not talking a papal ring. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about a ring on the on the backside. That's what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. That's the ring mm -hmm. that you're being asked to kiss, because guess what? That lobby, it used to be that the lobby, the unapologetic lavender mafia lobby was only on the left, but it's not see this, no. this is the thing it's not right. And 
your man oh, Peter Thiel. Back, it's, it's banking the whole thing. It's banking the whole thing. Like, does, does how did Peter Thiel is anti is anti gay? Does, is somebody out there who thinks Peter Thiel is anti? How how did, did anybody ask themselves this? Right? How did transgender flags and transgender movement and like didn't it seeming wasn't it seemingly like almost overnight that the mm-hmm. hormone blockers and the preying on young people for the surgeries and all that didn't it wasn't it didn't it feel seemingly overnight out of yep. nowhere yep right those of us who are in subculture it's like i remember working with a guy in a shop this is in like 2000 like four 2004 maybe five whatever i remember working with a guy in a shop and you know okay he's kind of an odd dude okay no problem Guy disappears, he pops up, you know, whatever, seven, eight years later. Oh, well, he he ended up going to Canada because he got a free uh, sex change in the preparatory hormone treatments in Canada. So why am I saying this? I'm saying it because it's seemingly overnight, but it was already Mm -hmm. moving in the kind of subset. Like, look, it gained mass not just in numbers, but in in the ability to kind of articulate itself in the underground, right? Subcultures, it's everything. Like, I'm sorry, I'm just kind of like becoming an old man tonight. Like piercing, the piercing underground, like back in the day, Gauntlet, there's a place called the Gauntlet in LA, which was like the premier like body piercing place back in the day in LA. And the Gauntlet was also pretty much like a homosexual, (laughs) you know what I mean? It was, it's, so yep. the thing is, is like body piercing for a long time. Like this isn't just like your dad being like, that's for homosexuals. No, body piercing for a long time beyond whatever, quote unquote, modern primitive movement was yeah, associated with the yeah. BDSM thing, which, by the way, right, is a spirit that has to be broken oh, yes. over people. Oh, BDSM yes. and all this stuff. And so all of that is is it's hand in glove with homosexuality. And yep. so all yeah. that stuff has been lurking around in the shadows and all this, but you don't know that because it's whatever. But see, the thing is, is I'm just saying like, you got to be careful people because when you're like, Oh, the normies, they're just swallowing everything. Like you think the normies and the NPCs are the people who voted for Biden, but you're, but what if you're a normie and NPC on a different, like what we're trying to do, like, forgive me for beating sheep and feeding goats. What we are trying to do is wake people up and realize like, stop thinking that you're not a normie. That's it. That's it. And, and thinking like, oh, the Biden people, the BLMs, the whatever, they're the normies. It's like, no, you're a normie too. That's the spell. That's the spell, right? Mm-hmm. That's the spell. Because the normies on the left, their whole thing is resentment. They're the party of resentment, right? Communism feeds and socialism feeds on envy. That's great, whatever. But you know what conservatism, quote unquote, feeds on? Right, self righteousness. It feels on the. It feeds on the the type of self righteousness that blinds someone. Trump, I've never asked. I've never done anything that I had to ask God for forgiveness. And that's the pinnacle of self righteousness. And I would just say this: it's actually the definition of self righteousness. It's it's literally the definition (laughs) of self righteousness. And and I would just say this: forgive me, I'll shut up. Right. I, I would just say this. Your standard Orthodox Christian, come at me, right? I'm, I'm, I'm ready. You bring whoever you want, right? Let's, let's, right? <laughs> That's not pride, people, right? Because I'm not standing on my own, my own thing. Our standard is the Beatitudes, people. That's it. Your standard for morality, your standard for life, your standard for what reality is, morality and reality is the Beatitudes, both in Matthew and Luke. Oh, yeah. That is our standard and that is not the standard that people are wanting to they're like well that's cool that's fine but look the reality is is (laughs) go ahead andrew father this was the other thing that was coming up to me throughout the week what i realized because i you know unfortunately i went and looked at the comments on on our last videos i think we all did but what what occurred to me is you know where you said where we're talking about reality is what I, what I understood immediately was like, Oh, there's a whole bunch of people who call themselves Orthodox Christians who don't actually believe this is real. Mm -hmm. There's a whole bunch of people who say the creed, 
but don't like the creed starts with I believe. Mm -hmm. All those things in the creed, I, I, me, Cyprian, mm -hmm. I believe them. Mm -hmm. It was believing them that made me say to Father Turbo, I have to be in the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I, it's not, it's not, let me do all the things in the form, be in the church because it's cool. And then maybe I'll come to believe it. Mm -hmm. I believed it before I was in the church, which if I believe it, that means I have to be in the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Christ. And somebody said there was a comment and this was the one that really told me, oh, I need to, I, I need to change my perspective and understand there are a bunch of people who. Uh, who don't actually believe this is real because the person said they started this with as their justification for voting for Trump. We don't have a perfect Orthodox King. <laughs> and I said, hold on, hold on. Because right in the creed, isn't Christ one, lo <laughs> yeah, one, say. one Lord, <laughs> one Lord, Jesus Christ. And the word Lord in the Greek version in the Nicene creed is kurios, which was the which was the title of the Roman Empire emperor. Kurios, Jesus Christos. Christos means king and high priest. It's like, no, how are you? a? And they're like, oh, but I'm an Orthodox Christian. No, you can't say you're a Christian if you say we don't have a perfect Orthodox king. You simply can't. You can't say it. And, and I feel like this is to your point earlier in, in tonight where you're saying, like, go back and listen, because I feel like we've said this before. So I feel like. We, I know I've personally said this to people about like people don't believe that Jesus is is heading the church. That is like get off. Like who cares what exactly. whatever like academic, scholastic, Taylor Marshall, blah blah blah. De facto, the way it plays out is the Latins don't believe. That's, that's why they're a. That's that's why people found the magisterium. That's why that happened because they. That's do their heresy. Not, that's the heresy. They do not believe that Christ runs the church. Like we do, right? So all the like, oh, Orthodox are just a bunch of like, they're a confederation of just barbarians and there's no administration and blah, blah. It's like, no, you just, you, you literally don't believe that Christ leads the church. And let me just say this. And that's why, right? It's all good. We have moments, right? But listen, I think that was a nice little turning point in just saying to people, 2020 was a blessing. Remember that? Like just yes. saying to people, 2020 was a yes. blessing. What is that? That is the perspective of Christ because it's like he allowed it. What is he doing? What does he want? The wheat's and the tear. What does he want? So it's the same thing here. And but but this is, I think I'd say this, forgive me if I'm being old man again. But I just threw this out to a couple of people and it's kind of like, I know it's tough to hear. I, I know it's tough to hear, right? Um, but I submit. Things would have been better for us as Orthodox Christians if Kamala had one. Agreed. I, yeah, and this is my thing: is in Missouri. This is this is this is something that no one is, as far as I'm aware, has really touched on. But the same people in Missouri, if you look at the breakdown of the county by county, stay, uh, who who voted red or blue? There is two blues in all of Missouri. And that's Jackson County, which is where Father and I live. And then there's the county, which is St. Louis. So those are the yep. two most metropolitan areas in, in Missouri. Both of them, shocker, blue. Everything else is red. Trump won. And there is a grand hurrah of red hats being thrown in the air while everyone is busting out their Bud Lights because it's not gay anymore to drink Bud Light anymore. They start drinking their Bud Light. And nobody... Isn't that even crazy? <laughs> Nobody even acknowledges for one second that abortion was made legal again. No one cared. Thank you. No one cared. No one cared. No and, one knew. And and gambling made legal. And mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. that, those two alone, I was like, I was like, this is a dark day. This is a dark day for Missouri. It's a dark day that the same people that voted Trump into office overturned an abortion ban in one of the most historically red states that there ever was. And not only that, but n not even a whisper is mentioned of it. Nobody is even... You know who made that possible? You know who made that possible? Donald but, Trump. But this synthesis, this right, right here... But Andrew, this, Andrew, do you know who made that possible? 
Yes. And this is the point I'm saying. This is what okay. you should be worried about. Mm -hmm. yes. The fact that like I, I saw a meme a couple of years ago, it was like the, con the con conservative versus the Democratic flag 20 years ago is the gay flag and the American flag. And then now it's now it's the de the trans flag and then the gay flag. Mm -hmm. So like that, that <laughs> moving over that slightly to the left thing, yeah. that synthesis is so and that is like, this is the thing you need to be worried about is the fact is the people who can reach everyone that and the compromises that are being made and the net and the knees that are being bowed, the incense that's being pinched uh, along the way. None of that is concerning if we can just return to the quote unquote moral Amer like the American moral system that we have established. But nobody and who voted for Trump voted for that. That's well, the interesting part. That's the spell. Anybody who believes that that's what they were voting for, it's contrary. Like, for instance, yeah, who is the biggest trans yeah. advocate in the world? Who is the world's biggest trans advocate? The devil. Well, who's a human? Oh, I don't know. Elon Musk. Because transgenderism is just a part of transhumanism. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Got you. It's, yeah. Just, yeah. It's, just a, it's just a subset. Transgenderism is just a subset of transhumanism. And the world's biggest transhumanist is Elon Musk. Yeah, but can I just can I just say this one thing though? I just want to bring a little bit of insight into that. You know, like Elon, I saw an interview where he was complaining about losing his son to the uh the trans agenda. Have you seen this? So his quote unquote. Well, he whatever. has a trans he has a transgender child. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So he made this whole thing. That's one, you know, and like, oh, you know, blah, 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 blah. But you know what's funny? On the one hand, I'm just gonna try to like, trans, you know, you know, kind of go through the the levels. On a real base level, right? On a real base psychological human level, he's not even really complaining about the fact that his kid's transgender. No, he's complaining about the fact that his kid was coerced, and like, yeah. and and um, you know, basically conditioned through the, the propaganda machines, which he's a big part of, right? So that so that's. That's that's on that level. So it's not like he's necessarily anti. It's just that if you see this one interview, he's like, I don't like the fact that my kid, my son's no longer my son. He's this whatever it is with them. And it's but it's, father, can we get forgive me? Can we get back to the abdicating on that, though? Because how are you the world's richest man? And you don't spend enough time with your own child that you allow them. So the world's richest man allowed his child to be coerced yeah. into yeah. being transgender? Yeah. What kind of a father are you? Well, here's the thing, right? Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> here's, here, here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. I mean, this is why I'm, this is why I think this is important because Elon is one of the most I mean, we were saying other but like, okay, whatever, people feel like it's judgment whatever. I I think the fact that we are duped into yeah. this idea that we can't call a spade a spade as Christians. Like, well, don't judge. It's like, man, if, if this is where we're at, where we can see something as, I mean, look, we already talked about it. Grimes and the whole thing, you know, if we he can't. He dressed up as a demon. <laughs> it, it's just, these things are just so out in the open. But here, here's, here's the thing that's interesting. All the things that worked for people in 20 to open their eyes. Now it's. Like what happened? What what happened to being able to see? Because again, the preferences, right, and the preferences for certain things like economic preferences, like all 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 the stuff that basically you give the pinch for. And and this is the thing. Christ is it, it's we are headed into another ap apocalypse, another revealing. But this revealing is you know it's. The one was the difficulty, and the other one is what you're going to do with your "quote unquote" abundance. Like you, you've got your, you've got your golden calves that you wanted. Now, what are you going to do? Right? Are you going to wake up to that? And I think, I think the reality of people even being able to face the fact that maybe everything shouldn't be about my wants on, on a on a on a bigger scale. Because this is what I'm going to say: someone's still probably in a pothole of like he said, Kamala should have won. It's like, yeah, let me just explain it for people. Why do I think it might have been better for us if Kamal should won? Because at least you 
See, people woke up during 20 because they could see something so obvious that they could, that was already there before. They just couldn't see it. But now it's like people had already started going back to sleep, right? Because, you know, it's uh, <clears throat> that one Babylon B skit where the devil's like, tone it down a bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, tone it down real. a bit. It's like, tone it down. Everyone's like the outrage kind of dies down a little bit. It's just it's just enough to kind of keep you engaged. Right. But the reality is, is like the, the sleep is so very deep. It's so deep. And the ignorance of the wiles of the devil this is this is why we're railing and saying all these things because again, just to make it simple for people, like it's it's not even about what you are considering, you know, Donald J. Trump. It's something it's something bigger than that. It's something bigger than that. So how are we supposed to live? You know what I mean? Well, Always talking about building, you have to build. Here's the priest, PSA, whatever. You always have to build. Went, went into depth, kind of like almost to the point of being pedantic last week. But I just want to throw this out, people, for something for people to consider. You know, a lot. And I and I don't know if this, I don't know if I brought this up before, so forgive me if I had. But you know, looking at Lot, why was Lot righteous? Like, who is Lot? Right. He's a, ne- he's a nephew of Abraham. He's the nephew of Abraham. And so let's just kind of look at Lot's ark, shall we? Mm-hmm. Lot and Abraham are enjoying the, the benefits and the abundance and generosity of God. Cattle increasing, men and women, servants increasing, their means and their goods increasing. And their two camps become so populous, Right that they begin to bicker. Their servants are fighting with each other, right? So Lot's like, hey, this is too much. We got to separate. Abraham doesn't want to separate. We got to separate. So he's like, okay, look, left or right, where do you want to go? Lot looks to the left, let's say, I can't remember, but looks and sees luscious green water, all that stuff. He says, I'm going there. Okay, great. You know, God says to Abraham, wherever you go, you know, I'll bless you, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So right there, Lot, instead of honoring his uncle, who saved his life, who rescued him, did all these things, instead of honoring his uncle, he says, I want the best portion. Okay, strike number one. Are you following me? So next time you hear about Lot, guess what? He's hanging out at Sodom. It's like, what are you doing in Sodom? What are you doing in Sodom? Okay, strike number two. Okay, so we all know the thing, right? Uh, there's the Ophany, the the hospital of Abraham. There's the visitation. Abraham demonstrates what it means to be a Christian. What does it mean to be a Christian? You have to do two things if you're a Christian. You offer hospitality and you offer intercession. That's what it means to be a Christian. Abraham, he offered hospitality. He was a friend of God, right? He made sure that those visitors were given hospitality. He offered intercession. He interceded for Lot and the inhabitants of of Sodom. So we have this intercession, we have this hospitality, and lo and behold, well, if I find five people righteous, I'll spare it, right? Couldn't be done, right? So everybody knows, right? So you go down, the angel goes to the city, angels go to the city, and they go to visit Lot, and what happens, right? This is the famous scene in Sodom, right? Um, The men in Sodom, right, become violent, right? Uh, and start wanting to knock down the door and say, give us the men that are there so that we can have sex with them. Watch this. What does Lot do? Offers his daughters. He offers his virgin daughters. (laughs) He offers his virgin daughters, right? He says, no, 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 take my daughters. They're virgins. They never know the man. We don't want them. I want to just stop right here. Bring me back to finish the thing about Lot, because Lot shows us how to live, interestingly enough, right? But I just want to take a little side note to show somebody about something. One of the big reasons why like, we keep doing this until whatever, I don't know, is to show people these things, like showing people, yes, what the real path is, but also a big part of it is like, you know, we're apocalypse dudes, whatever. It's like, what is being revealed? Let me show you something about this. Isn't it interesting 
the homosexuals there in in Sodom, right? What did they want? They just wanted the defilement of the holy. I just want everyone to, to listen really closely to what I'm saying. Because again, it scales up and it scales down. Right? Forgive the, forgive everyone. This is about to turn PG, maybe NC-17. I don't know about this point, right? But I just want to get into some, some mechanics of things, right? Let's just be really frank, okay? The fact that they would rather have had the gay sex versus virgin daughters tells you everything. It wasn't about love. It wasn't about like the, the, the I just wanted the pleasure, whatever. It's I wanted to they wanted to defile what is holy. Virginity is the physical, mm -hmm. you know, material manifestation of holiness. Why? Because it's set apart. Are you following me? Right. Right. They didn't want just like pleasure. They didn't want companionship. They wanted to defile the holy. So what happens with the demonic is it always comes in the guise of like, oh, well, it's this and that. But really, it is always about defiling the holy, period. Mm -hmm. And the problem that we're facing, the, pro the thing we're trying to wake everyone up to is like, sometimes it works by just like going for those poor suckers who are like so far gone that they are, you know, conditioned and so broken as human beings that they're all in on the debauchery for what it is on face value. Those people exist for sure. Yes. But it's the other ones who are like in the guise of, no, no, no. Look, they just want to have a monogamous family too. Like, mm -hmm. like people who say these things to me, I'm like, oh, you've never really been around gay people, have you? Right. I yeah, have. That's true. Oh, I, I have, have too. I have. <laughs> Uh, I lived in really West Hollywood didn't. for a spell. It's you know uh, that place is wicked. Like some of the most violent people I've ever been around have been lesbians. Yep. Right. Oh, there's more domestic violence in lesbian relationships yep. per capita than yep. it's like yep. it's off the charts. Off the charts. It's like off the, off charts. the charts. So, anyways, <laughs> so anyways, Father, so I have just, something yeah, to add ahead. to your point really quick. Actually. One of the things that a good friend of mine who I'm still very close with is a gay man and he's been gay, you know, he's like 57 mm -hmm. years old or whatever, been in the scene a long time. And he says openly, and I've had this confirmed with a couple other gay people I know, their favorite thing to do is to take people who are not gay. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. When and they down. basically like over time wear them Just down. Spoil them. 100%. One, one, yeah. yeah. Just spoil them because that's the name of the game. Mm -hmm. It's oftentimes through stringing them out through drugs and then That's getting the name. Drugs. That is the name of the game. Mm -hmm. And thanks to the, thanks to the new, and I don't mean administration as in literal like Trump. I mean like the new spirit that's come in. It's everyone's going to start accepting they're, they're, but they already started to accept it bit by bit. Well, I don't want to seem like I'm mean. I don't seem like a bigot. It started off with like, well, I don't want to seem like I'm racist. And then like, and, ugh, anyways, I want to get back to the but but, so. but father I think the important th I think the important thing here so that people don't miss it because you know I'm not obviously not talking to the AI demons that are running around I'm talking to the actual people who are hearing something and there's like because this is a provocative conversation they're hearing something what what we are saying is not this is not like an anti -necess it is but it's not like oh there's these gays and they're terrible. The the thing that we're saying is that there is a spirit that is animating that set of behaviors and the movement behind it. And the goal of that spirit is the defilement of the holy. And the fact that it comes in the form of homosexuality is just one of the forms that it comes in. It's just but its one, root it's just is in the, the defilement of the holy. <laughs> and like, that's here, why it matters. Here, here's the big problem. Here, here's the big problem. I'm I'm the most non-succinct person that's ever existed. Okay. But but the big problem is that we are always talking about that. The only time we Thank talk you. about anything lower than that is to try to just grab people out of the mud of their materialist mindset and go like, okay, that's fine. Let look up this way. That's we're always talking about that. And that's why people don't understand because it's like but here's the other point. It isn't highfalutin sophisto abstraction see that's the other thing all this is very practical this is part of the problem right? and literal 
and literal. <coughs> so this is the, um, let me just kind of like, let me just kind of like just ring this. Let me, let me get, get all the meat off the bone. No pun intended. So the other thing about this is like the defiling of the holy, right? It isn't just the kind of like innocent person that they're going to string out on drugs and introduce into like the gay lifestyle. It's them themselves. See, the thing that people don't understand about demonic possession, demonic oppression, demonic obsession, any type of diabolic influences, they hate the host. I don't like. They hate the host. So important. This is so important, Father. This is so like important when what talking about right when now. the de- when the demons when the master calls forth the demons out of the out of the demoniac legion, right, and tells them to go on the pigs. He's not being merciful to the demons. He's not saying, okay, guys, you don't want to go in the abyss. No problem. Love you too. He he tells them to go into the pigs to show their intention. Because what do the demons do to the pigs? They run them off the cliff and kill them. Okay. I don't know how many, I keep saying this to people. Like, and this is the thing. The depression anxiety is through the roof yep. in our society has been for years, right? Yep. Right? We, I wish, I wish we... I wish we had done some pre. Uh, who knew? We didn't know we were going to get here. Maybe someone pull it up. the The suicide stats. I was I looking at suicide stats. Like I, I heard some stats like two weeks ago. I already knew they were through the roof like six years ago, even before yeah. twenty twenty. Like the suicide stats are through the roof, and those are just the reported suicides. Yep. Not to mention the people who just overdose and die, but there's yep. no. They didn't say beforehand, I'm doing yep. this to kill myself. Yep. yep. So uh, they, the rates increased 37%. That's insane. Between 2000 no. and 2018 and decreased 5% 2018. But they returned. Then they returned in 2022. Do yeah. you want newer rates? No. I those, mean, what the year rates had the highest available. suicide rates? 2022 was a record high. 2022 was the high, the highest rate. And, and it's rate. It's not numbers. It's yeah. rate. Yeah. Since they started counting in 1941 at 14.3 per 100,000 people. 2022. Never been so high. And again, as Andrew said, that's just that doesn't count all the people who mm-hmm. were depressed and took took fentanyl mm-hmm. and OD'd. When you add in the fentanyl deaths into mm-hmm. that, which so, are suicides, which are suicides. Yeah, it's just. You know, and and I can say that the other part of that spirit, and this is something I have encountered, I have never, and granted, I have not worked in the field of mental health for very long, but in the short time I've worked with people in recovery, I have never seen a generation that is so absolutely wrecked emotionally, mm-hmm. with depression and anxiety but mm. has never been more unwilling to mm. accept help. Like to like to accept that like maybe the thing that you live by is wrong. Mm-hmm. Maybe the core fundamental thing that you're telling yourself about who you are is incorrect. And maybe that's where a lot of these negative feelings and they won't even hear of it. Because Not because Andrew talk. Andrew, as you know so much more than most people. The real cocktail that kills people is the mix of self-love and pride and an inability Mm -hmm. to receive any correction and to say that I'm going the wrong way. That is that's ultimately what kills people. Yeah, I you you can get a million. Whoa, where am I? You can get a million uh, likes on Instagram by, you know, sharing stories of what a, 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 a victim of your own addiction you are i mean there's just as much of that and i mean that that's that's actually that's the real basis of and we've talked about it so many times it's the real basis of what woke is really about it's about victimizing yourself to get attention for the victimization that you've done to yourself yeah yeah Yeah. because that's what woke is yeah yeah and even then that um that spirit in and of itself, you know, I think we've said it before, 
but like it, it transcends any kind of like gender identity because I can't get oh, through yeah. to even some of the most quote unquote base dudes. No, it, no, no, no. It, it's across the board. Everyone yeah. is so proud. But I just, self, yeah. I just want to make that clear. Well, it's not a political, it's not a political ideology. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. Yeah. And, that, so, and that's the thing is, that's what everyone's missing is that it's a spiritual thing. They got you coming and going. They got that's you coming and going. And yeah. the only way out, and this is, again, people, I, I don't know how to, I mean it in the most just literal sense. It's like the only way out is, is Christ. And when I say Christ, I mean the true Christ, because evangelical Christ ain't cutting it, clearly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And, 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 that, I, and that's that's to your point, Father. The thing I was going to end that whole thing that I was going to say about people with their un- unwilling or unable to accept any kind of treatment option that is outside their mm-hmm. realm of comfort yeah. is that they are unwilling to accept correction. And then that, for me, has been my experience of the sign of a person's spiritual health. If a person is spiritually healthy, they'll accept correction and say, dang, maybe you're right. I maybe mean, you're seeing oh something. Gosh, Andrew, I hate well, they want, to, they want to be healed. This but they actually see, want to be healed. But then that's the thing is I'm sure Father has seen this so many times. That leads me to the question <laughs> of the very first question Christ asks people. Do, do you, you want, want to, be to be healed? Do you want to be healed? And there is a whole generation of people that say, yes, no. if it's on my terms. Which means it, no. Yeah, essentially. But they don't know that. They don't know that because. Oh, I think they do. No, because. I think, I think deep down, I think deep down they do. That's the dollar on the fish hook that keeps getting pulled back is because that's what my field promises. My field mm. promises and your time. I, I mean, it says it in the SAMHSA definition, yeah. the Substance Abuse Mental <laughs> Health, da, 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 their definition of recovery is a self-determined lifestyle. Jelly roll. Jelly roll. Oh, God. Oh, he's the, oh, he's the prime example. So for those who don't know, I just want to oh, say man. this. This is important. Jelly roll. There's an article, and Father and I talked about it. But Jelly Roll, the famous, I don't know whatever he is. He does something. He's a singer. Singer. He's a singer. Yeah. yeah he's and a really good he, singer, actually. I don't know. I don't know if I've ever heard anything by him. He's I, a talented singer. I know he appeals to a very certain demographic. And most of them tend to live in Missouri. And so when I talk with people about sober, now it's almost like, okay. Now, granted. I'm not a person that's coming down and saying like there's one definition of sober. There's one definite. I'm. I. Have oh, he's not sober. Little, yeah, but no, this is nothing approaching sober. He drinks regularly and he smokes pot every day by his own admission. He does. Well, bo- he Andrew, even if he didn't do any of those things, I could look at him and I've heard interviews with him and like because sobriety isn't about but, what you put into your yeah. body. Yeah. I can tell your sobriety by what's coming out of your mouth. Yeah. You could be a complete, you could take in no chemicals and be completely not sober. Dry drunk. Yeah, dry drunk. There you or go. N- n- even then, but this is the thing that I want to talk about now is now dry drunk is not even, I don't run into many dry drunks anymore, Father, because I think the spirit is so palpable. Mm-hmm. There's an anti higher power ready to accept them at any time. And I've been saying it for a while. The devil will keep you sober if you do the pinch of incense. And then the pinch of incense tends to be the wick, the weakening of the, uh, of the Judeo Christian God that Bill W and Dr. Bob set out to worship and to follow to the best of their limited understanding that has any of that language is no longer readily accepted in the more advanced to progressive signs of recovery than the recovery field. And that is the fight. That's the side of that field of recovery that is winning. They're winning. They're now like there are people, old timers with a million years of recovery of a million years of sobriety. And they are really willing to accept things about God that have just never been accepted have never, ever been accepted in AA, and it's happening now. And 
So when Jelly Roll comes forward and says, like, no, there's different types of recovery, there's different types of sobriety, <laughs> and I'm all for that. That's not something that I'm <laughs> arguing because it doesn't, it's not cookie cutter. And my definition of recovery <laughs> is always going to be different than Dr. Bob or whoever, because my definition of recovery is what is your orientation to? Are you becoming more oriented towards Christ? And I mean Christ yes. as he is and not as you want him to be. And if you are doing that, your spiritual health increases to the point where you can take correction. You can make real steps to actually become more Christ-like. <clears throat> in the, in, well, in but, the then there's a, but Andrew, then you're do, what you're saying is there's only one definition of sobriety. But and there's only one definition of recovery. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. But at the same time, I can't I can't act like that. That looks the same as what we've been raised to believe. Well, neither do the neither do the saints. Exactly. There's a whole bunch of different. There's a whole bunch different. of different saints, yeah. but there's only one definition of holiness. Right? Yes. And that is Christ. But the branching, the, the, the branching I'm trying to talk about, and maybe I'm just tired and I'm not making sense and explaining myself very well. The branching that happened from that fragmentation of AA fragmented oh, yeah. in a way that further led people towards uh and it's not ecumenism okay stop well it's protestantism stop. it's stop. the exact same I was gonna say pattern. that the yeah. fragmentation always does that yeah, yeah. that's well, that's okay. the whole point that's the whole point that's where yeah. fragmentation is done that's why that's why when we're trying to point this across to people because basically what we're saying is like it doesn't really matter whatever because we're talking Orthodox Christians, right? Or, or people who want to be in light with Christ. All, this is what matters, right? But why are we having such a struggle? Because of this very type of fragmentation that you're talking about. Because now there's a whole segment, to, and that's one of the things that happened in 20. It's like, well, okay, we already knew that there was two churches happening, but now it like, just became yeah. really explicit. And so now, now there's just, more than two, Father. Clearly, people haven't realized it yet, but there's way more than two. Yeah. And so this this splintering and this fragmenting, like this is the thing. And let me just say, like, the way that the unity is found is Christ. Like truly apprehending Christ. So what is what does that mean? I can tell you what it means. If you are not willing to receive correction, you will not you will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. You you Boom. And you, in a literal sense, you 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 cannot be saved. Well, you because you can't even interact with Christ. Because the very the very movement of interacting with with Christ necessitates correction. That's it. It necessitates <laughs> it. That's it. Yeah. Like there's like it, it, it's essentially that's all it is is correction. That's yeah. exactly. That's like, there's nothing he, else. That's like who, that's what he's doing. That, that's, that's what he's doing. Is. That that's that. There's nothing else. So. So when these people are just kind of like, nah, it's just like, and you you want to dilute that for what? You, what do you like? You want to dilute it for for some what? Like gold back Bitcoin? Like what do you want? Right, like exactly. like like what kind of? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah, you know, we were just talking about this the other night. It's like, look, I I am fully expecting them to get rid of the Fed. Oh yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Because you don't need the Fed anymore. Like, like all the oh, time. No, it's it's gonna be a it's gonna be a, a stable coin. Of course, it's gonna be a stable coin. All, yeah, all, yeah, yeah. It's, all of it's the all place. of the all of the freedom stuff, all the like yeah. conspiracy stuff. The people that yeah. like, why do you think they allowed it to be? Why do you think they put it into the the lexicon? Oh, because it was all wrong, Father. It's the, none of that was the plan. They put it all into the lexicon for a reason. Right. Yeah. So so yeah. So watch this, guys. It's this. I I think this is about to be great. Whatever. So a lot. <laughs> okay. Now we're back to a lot. <laughs> so get back to a lot, right? Trump Trump calls that the weave. So for all the Trumpists, you just got a bad <laughs> weave. That was a great. <laughs> right. So so here we go. So the thing with a lot is we've I've tried to lay out a good case for why he has bad character, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. So why does the Bible call him righteous? Why mm -hmm. do the scriptures call him righteous? Why do why does the church look upon Lot as righteous? Do you repent it? Uh, it's he? a little bit even more kind of specific than that to some degree, but abstract in another way, I guess. Um, because he lamented the sin of Sodom. Right. He lamented the sin of Sodom. This is what the scripture says. Now, 
what does that mean for us? How are we supposed to live? People don't want to hear this, mm. right? People want to hear this. Um, if if forgive me, but like orthodox, meaning like evangelical and a cassock, it ain't gonna cut it because because that's mm. that that very like very quickly leads you to a road of chiliasm, utopianism. And there's people who a couple episodes were like, no, that's not utopianism. And I had I had one cat. I did this one interview. And another guy said that I was, talk- I was calling out the neo Byzantine guys and like no wanting the wanting America to be Orthodox that's not neo Byzantine like, yes it is because you don't understand what that means for the country to be Orthodox if you did you wouldn't be losing your mind when I say things like yeah but it, be- it would have been better for us to come all in one right you know because- what you also probably wouldn't want it that person because those people who are asking for that they're not ready to live in an orthodox country they don't they don't want it they don't want it and so and so because let me just say this getting back to law and like lamenting and like yeah like oh come on Foz. like no i'm telling you like lamenting the lamenting is the thing if you if you think i'm stretching whatever i i i realize this i we um the sisterhood puts this out this little mm. I don't know if you can read that. Can you read that? Mm-hmm. Says, uh, the Beatitudes, Ten Commandments, Passions, and Aerial Toll Houses to be read in preparation for Holy Confession. Yeah, so oh, the, sis- yes. so the yes. sister puts this out for, um, you know, those those people which are not as, as few as you might think. Like, I don't really know what to confess. Okay, well, mm-hmm. here you go. But the yeah. thing is, is in that, the reason why I brought that up is people don't, re- like, so if you're in the Slavic tradition, maybe you're having the Beatitudes, um, you know, um, at the right before the great entrance, maybe. But a lot of people, they're just not aware of the Beatitudes. And so and the thing so, is, is that it's been transformative for me. I, I, I keep bring I keep bringing this up, but can I just read a couple of these? Is this okay? Yeah, we yeah always. I think always okay. I just I just always I just okay. because I always want to read this because there's people who always. like I, I don't know I don't even know if people read anymore. I, I honestly don't know. Sometimes I I don't know what constitutes orthodox christianity for people anymore besides certain externals which again 2020 that's anyways let me just read some of these beatitudes blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven kingdom of heaven blessed are they who mourn for they shall be comforted they shall be comforted blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth, inherit the earth. meekness People don't want meekness. They want, you ain't going to tell me anything, fool. Okay. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Hunger and thirst after righteousness. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Let me talk about purity in heart. That's so, that's that one. That one is the. Let me talk about purity in heart, right? Any inkling of trying to 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 step on your fellow man to get to whatever you think you want to get to, you have no purity of heart. You can't have purity of heart and and hold any level of temporal worldly ambition. You can't do it because the one will always mammon will always you can't serve two masters. Don't think mammon just as ching chang chang, you know dollar bills. You wanting to get to X, Y, and Z and willing to kind of like cut some course. Listen, I got a good, I got a, I got a, a good homie back uh, in California. Shout out to Todd, you know? And it's like, Todd is one of these guys, which he needs to hurry up and get in the church, but I uh, hope you hear me, Todd. But he's one of those guys where it's just like, I love Todd. I've known Todd since he was like a youngster. He's, you know, 18. And the thing is he suffered, Right. Todd's is one of these guys where like, like, you know, I look at him like, yeah, he suffered. Right. And he's watched family and friends just do this exact opposite thing. Just like sell out, sell out to get, to get a little ahead further. For what? For what? Right. Let me keep going. Blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the sons of God. God forbid that. Right. Blessed are they who are persecuted for righteousness sake. For there's the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom it's like St. Peter says in his uh, second epistle, I believe the second epistle. You know, if you're if you're a jerk and you get called out on it, I'm paraphrasing him. That's not righteousness. <laughs> no. 
you're not you're not you're not right just because you're being called out for being a jerk. That's not your that's not suffering for righteousness sake, right? Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and persecute and all say all manner of evil falsely against you for my sake. So this right here, this is what it means to be an Orthodox Christian. Is to, is it, This is essentially monasticism, and this is essentially a husband and a father if he does it right. Because mm-hmm. you're going through all these things for the love and the sake of your family, both in and out of uh, in and out of your household. Now, I said all that to say this. How what are we to do then? Lament, because lamenting is de facto this recognizing of of what of what is outside of your ability, right? Without abdicating. Listen to what I'm saying. Without it's it's recognizing something that's outside of your of your ability to change without abdicating, without becoming jaded, without becoming cynical, without becoming all those things that kill hope, without all those things that just give you nihilism and despair. By lamenting the sin of Sodom, you de facto are acknowledging the righteousness of God via the via the Beatitudes. And here's the thing: nobody wants to lament. Everybody wants to party. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants to make good America times now. great again. Everybody make wants America the good times great now. again. You know what? I just want to. I just want to. I'm just. I'm saying things directly and straightly out of love, my brothers. Don't talk to me about Russia. Don't talk to me about anything because <laughs> the suffering was the thing. And this isn't about being masochistic. This is just like. The reality. I mean, it just it plays out, right? I just I just mentioned my friend Todd. I can go on and on and on. It's like the people who are closest to God, they are the ones who have either a suffered, which means they patiently endured something, or they've lamented and suffered with others for the sake of others. Because I know people who are wealthy who have chosen to 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 have compassion, meaning to co-suffer with, right? Yes. And yes. By doing that, they have not allowed the devil to get a hold of them and to allow, you know, the cares of the world to choke out the good word. Mm-hmm. And see, and see, this is what it means to live as a Christian. But see, people don't think this. People think it's about like, give me some laws that are just going to get those annoying groups of people, give them give them their, their comeuppance. It's just like, that's not. That's that's not really the measure of, of being a Christian. And there's so many people now. This is what we've been talking about for years. There's so many people who have influxed into the church, which I don't know why, because again, they saw something in 20. They saw, I, I, I mean, they're ugh, man. They didn't come for Christ. Let's just put it that way. It's almost like they didn't know what spirit they were of. Yeah, that's a good word. That's a good word. Because again, if you like for people, this is how you know this is part of the problem, at least for this little segment of I mean, we are insignificant. But the reality is is people scratch their heads at what we're saying. And I was just saying it's not because it's like, oh no, I can't be corrected, I can't be wrong. Because I'm wrong on a ton on a ton of stuff. Just the reality is is if you can't really understand what we've been trying to say, it's like I'm just saying you're the problem. There, there's something there, there's something fundamentally about the fact that you haven't met Christ to the degree that you need to. I feel very comfortable saying that because I mean, people who have, they understand what we're saying. Be like, yeah, no, no one's clicking their heels. No one's saying like, yeah, it's like, no, that that's why it's the cross. You know what I'm saying? It's like, this is, this is the place for mourning brothers and sisters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is the place for mourning. This isn't the, this isn't the time for, you know, let the good times roll. You know, this ain't the same Rick Ocasek, whatever. So I'm just saying this is a reality in regards of, you know, maybe uh, next time I don't know we can move on to stuff. But I just, it, this was good to kind of answer all these things. Mm-hmm. Probably did a terrible job, probably just as not succinct as usual. But I just think it's, I think it's important to continue to try to bear witness to what's happening on the on the scale that it matters, Ephesians six twelve, on the scale that it matters, it's like if you can't see that those subtle influences are now starting to to manifest to such a great degree. That's this. Now we didn't even get into the whole energy weapon thing from Elon. You know what <laughs> I mean? 
We need oh, it's, I mean, <laughs> there's so it's it, there. Well, here's the thing. There's an endless. There's a literally endless amount to get into because it's added on to every day. Yeah. Well, okay. every day. <laughs> this 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 is the thing that <laughs> to what to what father was just saying, and we'll touch on the energy weapon next time because I'm all about it. Like that's 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 something that would be cool to touch on. But here's the thing that I would say is. The, the conversation that I've been having with people, I always end it with, generally, I could be wrong. I hope you're right. Mm -hmm. I hope you're right. And I hope that, like, the way that things are playing out, play out the way that you want them to. No. And that, or not that even that you want you to, but that this profitable vision that you have of a way of returning us to a Christian time, which, by the way, never existed, did not exist. And not only that, but of a Christian nation, never was a Christian nation. We are actually much more in line with Mace Masonic. Whatever. Yes. It's a Masonic nation. Yeah. There's no question. So I have always ended with, I, I could be wrong. And I think that that spirit. That's, is, that's a, that, uh, so, Andrew, I'm sorry. That's, it's a little passive aggressive. Well, because no. the thing is, you're not wrong. And you know you're not wrong. Well, I hope you know you're not wrong. I hope you, not, I hope that you do know you're not wrong. I'm not wrong about this. My stance I've always taken on this is there are definable truths. And if a saint yes. has said it, if the church has said it, then it, and if I say it, then I know I'm right. That's what I'm backing. Now, I have been wrong about little minutias about the way that yes. things are. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with being wrong. And that's what I, at the end of the day, when people talk about the flat earther thing, there was one guy that was trying to argue with me in the comments about the fact, he's like, how do you do this? And he's, if the earth's not flat, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, at the end of the day, for my day to day, me being a father of a bunch of kids, of a bunch of little kids and of a teenage daughter and of a wife and of working in mental health, da, 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 da. It does not matter to me. I could not care less. God knows what shape the world is. That's good enough for me. The moon is mentioned in the Bible. That's how come I know it's real. Now, the different little minutias that I'm talking about, about how the way that things are going to play out, I've been wrong on this very podcast. I have said things that later... Right, but that's, that's not what I'm talking about is, is passive aggression. But that's what right? I'm talking the worst, about right The now. worst curse, the worst curse you can ever give to someone is to say, I hope you get what you want. Oh, that. Well, I hope you get everything that you want. That is the worst curse. That is not that is not being nice to someone. That is cursing them. I never said I was being nice to him because I have said very, okay, very fair enough. clearly. Fair enough. Because very, you understand clear. that's a curse, right? I hope you get no. everything you want is a curse. I and because I mean, yeah, I've seen whatever movie, you know, uh, Bruce Almighty or whatever, where he gives everyone exactly what they want. And it's horrible. Yes. Yeah. Like, I've seen that, but what I'm talking about for this very thing, for the different minutiae of how things are going to play out, I could be wrong about some of the stuff. I really don't think well, the minutia, I am. Sure. But what I can say is, is like, are you also the person, person A in the comment section that is talking to me about how we are so wrong about whatever? Are you prepared to say the same thing? Are you prepared to say like, hey, I could be wrong about this? Like... No. And that is the thing that I have noticed. That's the similarity. And the, it's good. It's, you know, it's whatever. This is the third thing I wanted to say from the very beginning is, is that the, the thing that happens is, is this saint, everyone, St. Paisi was talking about the voting thing. I knew this was going to be the thing that everyone quoted to us, just like in 2020, when everyone quoted, if you spread of sickness to someone, let you be penanced as a murderer. They took this one little paragraph out of context and started mm -hmm. quoting it and railing it home mm -hmm. and home and home. That's what the demons do. Mm -hmm. Yes, yep. exactly. So when people come at me with the whole, well, St. Paisios, da, 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 da. Yes. Well, that's a demon. I'm aware of what St. Paisios talked about. Yes. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. That's a demon. If you are not in a position to say, maybe these dudes are actually onto something. And by these dudes, I mean, I just tend to follow 
follow my spiritual father while, you know, doing my own research and everything. If you're not prepared to say like, maybe this is not the way that I think it is. And maybe there's a much larger game being played with the government that is notorious for playing much larger games and perpetrating psyops because of Ephesians 6, 12, because of Ephesians 6, Thank 12, <laughs> of course, that's the unspoken context. But I'm just going to go and speak. <laughs> if you're not willing to believe that you're being manipulated on every level, through your phone, through your peers, through your echo chamber, through your president, if you are not willing to believe, then I can't reach you. There's nothing I can do. So then as like, a, let me just stop with this. You're also not a Christian. You're also not a Christian if you don't I just, just want to say this, right? I don't okay, Orthodox Christian. Help help me understand something, right? At some point in time, you use and, and it's hard now, right? Because there's all kinds of like, because of ecumenism and liberalism and all this stuff that's happened. But at some point in time, you're saying like, A number one, I believe that this um, state criminal who was a Jew that was murdered rose from the dead. And that his rising from the dead and his preaching to his disciples, which were also murdered, right? And kind of pass this on that. I, I believe that what he's saying is true. Okay, number one. So- you believe that okay you believe that number two just to kind of bring it down even like harder on people Mm -hmm. orthodox christian convert just listen to me right beyond those of you who are getting in now because the the nirvana moment which i'm not throwing shade welcome god bless you but beyond those of you who are getting in because the nirvana moment and it may be kind of in vogue in your circle red pill whatever you're into don't care like it's kind of cool to like become orthodox because it's based or whatever the thing is, right? Okay, let's just get this straight, right? So you came to some weird church which is mostly based in Eastern European and Mediterranean cultures, right? Who bless water to tell the demon to get the heck out of the water, mm-hmm. right? I, I, right? You yeah. mm-hmm. decided to say, hey, this church. This is this is the true church, even though the fact that I'm a Protestant, my mom is a Protestant, everybody in this country is a Protestant. We're the biggest, toughest, richest country that's ever existed, at least, you know, for a long time. We've we've been the biggest, toughest, richest country. And so you're telling me however million millions of people in America got it wrong. But you Orthodox Christian, you're saying, hey, I figured out I saw through the matrix and I figured out that. This whole thing, I read some Father Sarah from Rose, and I figured out that, you know what? The wool's been pulled over the eyes of the Western man. This is the true church. And I'm going to join the true church because I figured it out. And I saw through the lies that everyone else has been told in their philosophy classes and in their Baptist churches. You guys are all dupes. Mm-hmm. Hey, and by the way, in 20. When you were trying to get us to do stuff with the Eucharist, and I did it too, but that's okay. And <laughs> wear masks and all stuff. And like, I don't want to offend anybody, but I kind of did it too, whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. But now I see through it, and it was just all a ploy and to get the jibby jibby, all that stuff, right? I see all that, right? But now, all of the sudden, yeah. everything is on the up and up, on the upright. Pure integrity. Okay, I'm going too far. But there's more integrity. Hey, St. Paisio said, even if there's 50%, you're telling me that just like that, in spite of everything, in spite of what we just talked about with the certain states flipping for abortion, right? In spite of what we talked about with with the uh, IDF and Zog and all that stuff, right? In spite of what we're talking about with the clearly... The, the spiritual hegemony of, hin- of the Hindu demons, mm-hmm. you're still going to say like, no, but okay, all that's fine, but you know, it's still, it's, it's still the better thing. Okay. 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 Because okay. you're, you're able to cut through all that other stuff, but yet now all of a sudden it's conspiracy. Now all of a sudden. Because they never believed the first thing because they never believed the yeah. first thing, because if they believed the first thing, they couldn't do any of the other things. Yeah. Well said. Like, well said. I just was, yeah. That's, and not only that, oh, 
Oh, that thought's gone. I don't remember what happened. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I had something to add to that. Yeah. Well, well, we're at two hours. Yeah. Anyway. anyway, anyway, we're at two hours. That's that's the point. The point is is at the end of the day. Oh yeah, that was in the. Oh yeah, and then they salty, the whole, my friends. Say salty. <laughs> cognitive dissonance that's taking place. So 2016 was a legit election. 2020 <laughs> was not an ele- a legit election. But this one is a legit election. Am I saying something won. here? It's yeah, like the best comment. Won. Whoever said it, I want to, I don't drink, but I would buy you a beer, is the make Israel great again. And that yeah. comment, I was like, yeah. that is it. That's it. Mm-hmm. And again, mm-hmm. I got pushed back that on that. that like, well, how yeah. how how do how would Israel do that? You know, da, 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 like I want you to just go back and look through American history. I just want you to go back and see how often this thing seems to and like, well, Israel wasn't even a state till da 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 da. I'm like, again, I want you to go back through American history and I want you to look back on the long scale of what's happening. And that's all I'm gonna say. It's just like so again. My and I just want to make this clear for Andrew Funk. All I'm saying is my current struggle is not Trump derangement syndrome. I don't have a I, other than the 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 massive problems we have pointed out spiritually. My struggle right now is not liking him. That is my struggle. Is because I want to like him. The part. Can you that- read something real quick? It's fine. We can go over a little bit. I just want to. I just want to throw something. I want to go back to something. So this is um, Archbishop Atala Hana, his address. Right, he's speaking about Huckabee because you know Huckabee was was nominated. Like Huckabee, yeah. For them, for yeah. Ambassador, for ambassador of Israel. Yeah, that's like putting a drunk in a bar. Okay, it's so uh, his Grace uh, Archbishop Atala, he says, <clears throat> "We do not recognize what is called Christian Zionism." This term does not exist in our Christian literature or ecclesiastical lexicon. The blending of Christianity and Zionism is entirely condemned and rejected by us, especially as Christianity is a religion of love, mercy, brotherhood, and peace, while Zionism is a racist and terrorist movement responsible for the disasters and setbacks our people have faced, culminating in the genocide being perpetrated against our beloved brothers and sisters in Gaza. Well, this is Orthodox Bishop, everybody. In America, there are individuals who call themselves Christian Zionists. This phenomena... And this is, again, in response to Mike Huckabee, who was appointed, right? Um, Let me get me started on Jerry Kushner. This phenomena is despised and rejected by us because their literature is alien to Christian values. They interpret the Old Testament in a political manner that aligns with their agendas and interests, all of which serve the colonialist and racist Zionist project. So here's the thing. Some of you have been programmed by the other machine, by the dialectic. When you hear racist, you shut down, mm-hmm. right? When you hear racist, you shut down. There's no such thing. As, but I'm going to tell you something. And colonialism. I, I want to, yeah, and colonialism. I want to tell you something. You you don't know the Talmud. <laughs> You've never read the, you don't know any of the Talmud. Right? It is crazy. You don't know any of the Talmud. Okay, so anyways, <laughs> let me just keep going. <laughs> there is a certain there is a currently a nominee to be the U.S. ambassador to Tel Aviv uh, who belongs to this group and even claims to be a Christian pastor. He alleges that there is no such thing as a Palestine, a Palestine or Palestinian people, as though he's not read history or refuses to acknowledge it, that Palestine exists and its people exist, whether he likes it or not. It is regrettable that such individuals hold leadership positions in America. It is also <laughs> fortunate that they claim aff- affiliation with Christianity, while Christianity is entirely innocent of their positions, rhetoric, and actions. If they were truly Christians, they would call for an end to the war in Gaza and Lebanon and advocate for a just solution to the Palestinian issue that preserves the dignity and freedom of the Palestinian people. But they can't do that because if they did, they might, God forbid, be aligned with some some woke people. Okay. so anyways, however, these individuals are like ostriches that bury their heads in the sand, pretending that they are in a different world. No matter how much they ignore the existence of Palestine and its resilient and struggling people, Palestine exists, its people exist, and its history is glorious. To all those who deny Palestine's existence or have not properly studied history, let me remind them, in the Fourth Ecumenical Council held in Nicaea in the 4th century AD, when the Bishop of Jerusalem was given the title of Patriarch, he was named Patriarch of the Holy City of Jerusalem and all of Palestine. Mic drop. Boom. 
this demonstrates that Palestine existed and will continue to exist, and no one has the right to erase its existence. Palestine is mentioned in the Bible. Instead of these racists denying the existence of Palestinians, they should work towards resolving the Palestinian issue, which the which is the key to peace in our region and the world. Uh, it goes on to some more here, but I just I just bring this because <sighs> let me let me read this last part here. Forgive me, uh, Your Grace, but. I reiterate that we reject the term Christian Zionism because we consider it an insult to Christianity and its values. I urge journalists who wish to speak about such people to describe them as the group falsely claiming affiliation with Christianity while they are truly aligned with Zionism and its racist, barbaric ideology positions. So here, here's the thing. If you have fun, like we're, we're trying to do a service, right, and try to wake people up, the thing is like, watch out for being herded into one thing. Once you say I have to vote for this thing or I have to do this thing because if I don't do this, then by or or you're saying to us because we because I'm saying, well, not really doing that Think twice. Well, How about think twice? Even that <laughs> even that's Negative. a problem. And so the, so the reason I'm saying this is because be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dub. Y'all got to wise up. You can't. <laughs> it's like I tell my kids, you know. You can't be, um, you can't be proud and dumb. Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, Oof, that's yeah. <laughs> like we we have to we have to kind of wake up to some things here because what's going to happen is you're going to see subtle shifts in the way that you see things because to make it real, like not even esoteric you're going to start going to certain outlets and thinking, Hey, these guys are on it. Yeah. And this is right. If you're not listening to, if you're listen, get to the habit of hearing something that's ruffling your feathers. I'm just, yeah. just who does that? Who yeah. does it for all the talk people had years ago, like echo chambers, very few people do the, do the due diligence to find themselves outside of an echo chamber. By the way, listen to the other side, listen to them. They, they may be wrong about 90% of things, but they 10%, they got you dead to rights, buddy. Let me 10%, give, they got you dead to rights. <laughs> let me give props also to focus. Is that a glue stick? It is. I just found it. I'm using it as a pointer oh. to call emphasis to focus who pretty is a listener and pretty much disagrees with almost every single thing that we say is like my father. I'm a Greek Orthodox. I think he's like Greek Orthodox cradle. I want to say his dad's a yeah. liberal, like liberal something. I can't remember. He's a bit, you know, he works with AI. He's, he's talked to us a couple of times. He's had conversations where he's like, yeah, I disagree with you guys, but I want to hear what you have to say. Shout out. You know? And like, and in the comments, we've been like, awesome. Right Thank on. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Like that is legit. We have no problem with that. That's good because he's willing to stick it out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, father said like one time it's a long, but when uh, David could have killed um, oh. Saul. Yeah. And um, he, but he didn't cause he, you know, don't strike down my anointed is what, is that what the, 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 strength the anointed, the, the Lord, the Lord's anointed. Yeah. Yeah. So even then he's not even like coming at, He's not coming at father. He's not being disrespectful to father, even though he disagrees, he's not. And it's like, okay, so he's still sticking around for something. And even if he gets a little bit heated, like, I don't know, maybe he's unsubscribed. I have no idea. But it, even if he hasn't, like, he's still hanging out. He's still like listening to something that is purposefully ruff ruffling his feathers. And like, I just want to say that that's commendable because that's not something I can do very often. I hear whatever rhetoric start happening. Yeah. And and I immediately like I gotta turn. Let off. me throw another thing out there for people. I just want to maybe people don't get enough of this, right? Let me let me give another bit of advice. Just consider this this concept, guys. Um, and you know, if the nuns hear this, forgive me, but you know, you, you got to learn to to kind of put your hand to the poop to get the pearl. Yep. That that's where we're at these days. Yep. Like, yep. you're everybody's wanting the pearl to be presented them on on the on the velvet on the velvet pillow. Why that why ain't a do pearl? You think, that ain't a pearl. Why it's not a pearl. Why and first of all, why do you mm -hmm. think you deserve it that way? You see what I'm saying? You got to put exactly. your hand in the poop and to go through all that to, to figure it out. Because I'm gonna tell you why. Because the reality is is that if you're not willing 
to hear what someone's saying, in spite of how they're saying it, something's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. So many people tune something out because of how it's said. They don't hear Mm -hmm. what's being said. That's one of the number one problems with our society. That's getting back to what Andrew was saying earlier in the conversation today about people like being so proud they can't hear anything, which gets us back to what I was saying earlier. But like, if you can't receive correction, you you can't be saved. Because as long as like, well, mm-hmm. you know, if you cannot receive correction, if you can't hear something because of how it's said, even though it might be true, right? I'm talking to Christians. There's something wrong with you spiritually and, and you mm-hmm. need to, to, to mature. Mm-hmm. This whole this whole notion, I mean, this whole notion of of nicety and all this stuff, it's very dangerous. The pleasantries. Mm-hmm. It's very dangerous. Mm-hmm. It's very dangerous. Because I'm going to tell you a little secret, everybody. Anybody who has anything, their first line of defense of guarding it from being taken is a little bit of gruffness. Just yes. just throwing it out there. Okay. That's enough. Oh, that's that's that. I, I just rewatched The Island, the Russian movie. Mm-hmm. And the very well, first so, thing he says. One of my yeah. favorites. Yeah. Very first if thing not he my says. Favorite. One of the first things. Yeah. And it, again, saw it for the genius on a different level. Someone else, I, someone else uploaded on YouTube with a different translation. I think I like this other translation a little bit better. Some of the stuff that he says seems a little bit more in line with Fronima, but regardless. Um, but uh, like, who am I to say what's Fronima or whatnot? But anyway, um, one of the first things he says to that woman seeking a blessing for the abortion is that you want to go to hell and you want to take me with you, huh? Mm-hmm. Like that, yep. right there. Yep. It's just like, okay. Like, that's how you know that you're dealing with someone who actually cares. Mm-hmm. And that's that's what I tell people at my work. I'm telling you the sum of popular stuff because I genuinely care about you. I don't care if you like me or not. I don't care if you agree with me. But this is the real thing. Well, doing this whether I God. like you or not, whether I like you or not, I have I am I have a fear of God. Bingo. And if I don't and if I don't bear witness, that's forget about I, it. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I like you or not. I could I could hate you. What's that me clip? bearing witness doesn't have anything to do with What's whether or not I like you. I fear language. God. I fear God. That? There's a clip and uh, of Denzel, a Denzel movie, and his mm. son walks up to him and he says, "Why don't you like?" Oh yes. Me? And he's like, yes. "It does not matter if I like you. Doesn't matter if I like. It does not matter if I like. What doesn't matter? He's like, do you have a house? Do you have food? Do you have I taken care of you your entire life? And the guy's like, yeah. He's like, why would I do that? He's like, because you like because you like me. He's like, you still don't get it. Nope. You still don't understand. Doesn't have anything to do with you. It has nothing to do. I am your father. Nothing. This is my job. Yeah. And it's just like, whoo, that's powerful. It's yeah. powerful to hear that because, you know, that's but, not. But who but the, the you know what that movie is missing is the who. Because I'm your father. This is my job. And who gave me that job is Christ. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I fear Christ. And I will be. I don't care about. I fear. Christ. That's the whole thing. That's a great little scene, but it's truncated. Mm-hmm. It's because missing. the whole thing is, I fear God, and yeah. God gave me this job when mm-hmm. He gave me you, and I fear Him. So it doesn't matter. I don't need to like you. Yeah. Because I fear Him. That's mm-hmm. why I'm doing this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So That's... I don't care if anybody likes me. I uh, here, if I don't care if anybody disagrees. Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. care because everything I've said here, I've said because I fear. God. I only do this project because I fear God. Bingo. Yeah. I don't. Oh, I don't want to come. In, I don't want to come and do oh this my project. Gosh, bingo. I told the the brothers who were there with you, Father, in in yeah. uh, in Kansas City. Yeah. I told them years ago when they were living here, we would sit on Sundays after Tipica. And I would tell them, you know, I dread doing that project. Mm-hmm. I do it. The only reason I do it is as an obedience to my spiritual father because I fear God. Mm-hmm. I don't care. I don't care. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I don't care about anybody watching. Mm-hmm. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I don't I know mean, you. Really? I don't care about you. I don't care about you. I my, fear God. I'm bearing my, witness. That's it. My baptizing priest always said, I would, I love you guys. I would die for any of you, but I do not care what you think about me. 
Mm-hmm. Like, I just it. do not care. It just does not matter. It does not even a factor. It's not even like a factor. Okay. And, but that's, this is the last thing I'll say. And then I think we should end it because I do actually probably yes, got to get going. But um, I think that that's, that is that paradoxical orthodoxy. You know, this is God type of thing. When you, when you try and talk to someone about, well, how do you get people to like you? Quote unquote, how do you be, how do well, but so here's the thing. How is it that, how can you get that experience of being comfortable with yourself to the point where people respond to this person and say, this is a real one. Let me say that where someone can respond to a person and be like, this is well, because you don't try and do that thing. You're not trying to be the cool person. You're not trying to be the smart person. You're not trying to impress anyone. And once you're free of that, then you get the parts of your personality actually come out and those parts are created by God. And that's the parts that people actually respond to. When you actually free yourself of the shackle of like being able to like, well, image management, am I okay? Am I still being perceived in the way that I want to be perceived? Once that shed, then there's this whole other part of your personality that comes out that people really respond to. And they respond to in a way of like, Oh, this dude, I don't get a ton of compliments as a counselor, but one of them is, is I keep it real. So, yes. And I just, I just want to, one little thing on this, and this is just because forgive me, but you know, Cyprian got a little copper that he does care about you. What he doesn't care about is what you think of him. That's right. That's and right. and that's he was, he's that's just all right. We get right. That's we get, correct. We, that's, we all get carried correct. away. We all get that's carried correct. away. I do most of the time, but I just want to, I just want to <laughs> say that because, uh, the, I don't want to steal anybody's fruit, you know, anybody's rewards, whatever, but let's just say beyond what people see here, um, you know, the Lord has you working and 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 um bringing harvest in other ways so no you do care about people that like we do care that's i mean that's that's the thing because it because it isn't obviously just about like you know fear god is first and foremost but you can't sure. fear god and then not love your brother yeah well like, no because I, I i i love the i love them we love the church they, we love i the church. i i love I love them because yeah. uh, because they are God's creation. Yes, yes. And because I love Him and I fear Him, yes. and that is. But but them. But somebody as an individual that I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You don't care actions, about what they're going to say. Basically, what what I was trying to say is my actions here in this moment mm-hmm. are not for are yeah. not for your sake. Yeah, they're not and, in and your really, name. They're and, not for your sake. Yeah, and really, all of our actions, we're all trying to get them to at least that's how I try to lead you guys. How I try to lead everybody is that all of our actions ultimately are always motivated by the fear of God first. Cause if you have the fear 100%. of God first, then the love of your brother will come inevitably. You can't have the one and not the other. That's, that's, yes. that's the first epistle. Well, well, well said, well said, father, the nuance is important. So for, Forgive me, everyone, for for not being nuanced in my provocative statement. It brings like saying, "I forgive me for saying I don't care about you." That was <laughs> that wasn't the whole. <laughs> Let me walk that back that, just a little bit. because because hey. you know what somebody would somebody would take yeah. that away. So somebody's thanks. gonna glob somebody on would, to that. Somebody's gonna blah 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 about yeah. that. And because that, because and, that's and, not and what this I is and this is the tension because, like, the reality is is obviously there's care. And the reality is, is we live in a time where it's like, don't mistake, I, I can't, I'm just speaking for me, don't mistake me caring about these aspects as a Christian, as a priest, as a pastor, as a human being, as a man, for me, like being, talking out both sides of my neck, I'm not, because um, here's the thing that I'm sure everyone knows, like, I'm, I'm just saying this just for the record, right? I have an actual flesh and blood family of, of eight kids plus a wife on top of a parish, on top of, this isn't flexing. I'm just saying, if people don't know this, like I'm not some, I'm not some floating head that just sits around all day and, you know, just talks, whatever. I have a, I have a full life with an overflowing abundance of human souls that I am personally responsible for. So the reason why I'm saying that is not to be like, Oh, look what I got. It's just like, none of this is coming out of like a desire to like, Hey, let me tell you my opinion. 
like just like just like Supreme Server. It's none of this is that. And I think when people understand that, hopefully you can kind of cut through some of this because I think I think the reality is, is that you know we have a small slice of whatever, but I'm thankful for the slice we do have of like of an audience of talking to people. Of course. Because because there are there are people I know like well, there's a couple focuses. Um, there's one I met in in um, Arizona. Shout out to you, focus. But there's the other one, and so like there's people like that who are like, you are the one that we're doing this for in regards of the people of God who want to be more in line with Christ. And it's like this may seem very presumptuous on someone, but I think a lot of people agree. This is like trying to present something that I know people aren't getting. Not that I'm like the one on it, whatever. But it's just like this is one of the great benefits of not like we don't we're not doing this to have a bunch of likes and a bunch of subscribers yeah. and a bunch of whatever we're like putting it Clearly. out there <laughs> you know what i mean putting it out there for like for the love of god and hopefully because i know that like there's people if you can catch on to this you know i really do believe that what we're sharing um a lot of people can't get elsewhere <laughs> because they can't get it elsewhere they don't have the wherewithal to even like there's just the fact is there's a lot of people who their religious life is separate from their everyday life Mm -hmm. and the way, how do you see reality? And that's one of the big things we're trying to deal with is that no, 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 your tradition, your faith in Christ, you being Orthodox Christian should inform every aspect of your life, especially the sociological, political aspect of your life, because most people put all their stock into that. And that's the whole point of this. And it's just like, yeah, what is coming in regards of like that antichrist system, the antichrist spirit, the beast it's so system. close. It's so it, close. It's, Father. Like, it's so close. It's like, I just, because we're just trying to keep people from falling to a snare. Because one of those things where we said this, we said this, whatever, however many years ago, if you don't start developing your line now of where you, yeah. of where you're not going to cross, Yep. When you get to that line in real time, you're not going to say no. I, I just 2020 proved that to a bunch of people. It's like there is your chance. It's like a bunch of people caved. It's okay. That's fine. But are you going to learn from that? Or are you just going to just kind of like, yeah, whatever, close your eyes again? And that's all we're saying. That's all we're saying. It's like just be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. I think that's the name of the episode right there. Yep. That's, that's my vote. All right, gentlemen, I do. I really do. You should probably, I should probably go. Yep. Yeah. Thank um, you both. <laughs> the last 20 you. minutes was a doozy. Yeah. It was. I mean, if you've made it this far, yeah. good on you. Like, good on you. <laughs> um, so, One person, like, this is the most unsufferable podcast ever. I was like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I know. 100%. I was it's like, like, yeah. Yeah. I, I can't think of anything else more unlistenable. Yeah. I agree. I agree. <laughs> Um, so see you uh, next episode. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so if you want to reach out to us, Royal Path, uh, con- or contact at royalpath.network. There are people also reach out to me, Andrew, at royalpath.network. Personally, it's going to take a lot longer for me to answer that. Uh, there's stuff that I've been meaning to put on the playlist that we have. That whenever we mention music, I put it on there. I haven't put a couple. I haven't put a couple people on there, but they're going to be on there. And then yeah, I am going to put some misfits on there just because we mentioned them a couple weeks ago. Um, and then uh, please check out Mount, Mount Tabor and Scola Coffee. Mount Tabor is a school that's associated with St. Mary's. And then through them, there's a coffee roasting company. Uh, really legit. Uh, I'm not a coffee drinker anymore. But the, peop- but the few times I have had it, it is not, it's, it's good. And a lot of times when I drink bad coffee, I get really anxious. I can't really drink Folgers and stuff like that. And there's usually like a, a quality coffee. I don't know. My body interacts with it in a weird way, but I don't get anxious when I drink Scola. Like, so that means that like it's, it's actually quality. There's actually something good there. Um, so besides that, Jack, your thumbnails are. Incredible. Man, that last this one was, last woo, one. buddy. I, yeah. It that hit me great. later on. I was, oh, it's a golden cap. I was like, oh, I didn't yes, even think. Golden cap. I was like, yeah, it's so good. Weird. And then I just didn't have eyes to see or whatever. Um, Jack, you're killing it. 
And then we have a store, Royal Path dot store. Please check it out. Uh, we don't see any of that money. That's some of our merch. Um, I think I haven't been there in a long time, so I don't, or I haven't visited, so I don't know if we still have merch there. I think we do. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Still All right. There. Cool. We do. Absolutely. Um, we don't see any of that money. Um, it goes out to the parish of the people who created it. So, um, thank you very much, and thank you for having a good night. Uh, bye bye. Bye bye.